She's going to be doing an interview and, and live streaming the game. So everybody be cool. Just be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool, guys. We're all cool guys, right? Be cool. We're cool. Be cool, Hank. Hank, are you be cool? Um, yeah. Be all right, we're going to be cool. We're going to be cool. On today's part of my take, we've got a lot to get to. We got our good friend Ryan Whitney talking hockey. We're going to actually do our own version of the sports equinox because we're going to talk hockey with Ryan Whitney. We got NFL trade deadline. We got our college football talk on Wednesdays. James Harden traded again. Uh, a little choose your own adventure for the World Series. So it's a packed show. Hot seat, cool throne. Jimbo's packed Wednesday show. Pardon my take, and it's brought to you by our friends at Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. I I bought tickets last weekend to Wisconsin Ohio State. It was easy with the Game Time app. Got to see my seats beforehand, and guess what? There was also guys on the bus who bought tickets maybe 20 minutes before kickoff. They got a great deal with Game Time. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last-minute seats, find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy theater, and more. With zone deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game Time will credit you 110% of the distance, uh, the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code PMT for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed with the Game Time app. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Wednesday, November 1st. And the Washington Commanders are doing a fire sale. Yeah, everything must go. I was hope I was trying half to, price. I was trying to engineer a trade of Sweat and Young to the Niners in exchange for Kyle Shanahan to come back home. Mm -hmm. Did not work. Um, congratulations, Big Cat. Let me th be the first to congratulate you on getting Montez Sweat. He's a fine young player. Thank you. Second round pick. I'm happy. You're happy. I think we both fleeced each other. I think it was a, a double fleecing. A double fleecing. I am. Um, I don't know what I feel. I don't know what I feel. Are you, are you hungry? I'm I'm always hungry. I can always eat. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know what I feel in the fact that uh, I, I like to move because I assume every trade like this, you assume that there is a deal in place to re-sign Montez Sweat. So everyone's like, why would you trade a second round pick for a guy who's going to be a free agent? Obviously, if he becomes a free agent, this is the dumbest deal ever. I am assuming that Ryan Poles has already worked it out with his agent and and there's a plan in place to sign him long term, which, if that's the case, I like the deal because you probably aren't going to get a Montez Sweat in the second round who can help your defense right away next year. But there's also the part of the Bears are in this weird no man's land now where they added a very good player and but they're also trying to lose. The Bears are all in. This is an all in move that you just made. It's a little bit of confusing. If they had traded Jalen Johnson, then I would have been fully confused. I would have been like, what's going on? Because yeah. there was rumors that Jalen Johnson would get traded, which made no sense because I'm a firm believer in when you're tanking as a football team, it is important to tank, but it's also important to hold on to your good players. Yeah, so you got a good player. You got a very good young player. Um, I think he's worth a second rounder. I'm, yeah. I was surprised to get a second rounder. As long him, as they re-sign him. But I, I think there's no chance in hell that he just becomes a free agent at the end of this that year. That would make it because the dumbest trade that, ever. It, I think it actually would be the dumbest trade besides the Louisiana purchase. And I think Chase this, Claypool. And Chase Claypool. Uh, this would be by far the worst trade of all time. But at the very least, you could franchise tag him. So you at least get a year and a half. But that also doesn't make sense to spend a second round pick on a player that's going to play, what, 24 games for you? Yeah, no, he, he's he got a long-term deal. Let long me be deal. the first to report that Montez Sweat has signed a long-term deal with the Chicago Bears. And he's happy to be here. And he's happy to be here. Yeah, yeah no, uh, that was the 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 con my confusion. I, I am a believer in polls, but the confusion was when I immediately saw the trade and I said to myself, I like this trade, 
because I I do think like if a guy is proven as an NFL talent, it's more important than a draft pick. Yes. Uh, because he's been there, done that. You know he's going to be good. You're not just going off of measurements and hypotheticals. Uh, but my explanation of how I like the trade, the fact that they are going to sign him to a long term deal, and he's better than a second round player that you're going to get. Uh, a lot of people pointed out that it was the exact same reasoning I used with Chase, Chase Claypool. But he is actually good. He is. And he's, a, he's that's a big a, difference. And he's not a head case. That's either. a big difference. And he's he's played through injuries. He's been a, a bright spot on the commanders. I've been saying for the last, what, year and a half, I would rather keep Sweat than Young. And then two weeks ago, I was like, fuck it, trade both of them. So I'm glad they listened to at least what, what my train of thought was because this it's a full-blown fire sale. It's a rebuild. And I think I'm setting a record. I think all my teams are rebuilding right now. That's actually not bad, though. Uh, but to have all of I was talking to Max earlier. I, like All I, my teams stink and kind of rebuilding. As much shit as I give Max, he's got so many fun teams to root for. I know. And, and having expectations he just got rid of James fun. Harden, which we'll get to. And it now it's like Picked every, up bait him, though. every team. Who? Every team is in a rebuild. Batum. Batum. <laughs> Batum. <laughs> it's very. <laughs> what are you thinking, are you thinking of Kratom? Are you thinking of Tatum? No, he's thinking of Batum. Jason Tatum. I've never heard anyone call him Batum. Jason Tatum. I mean, it's spelled as Tatum. Yeah. Yeah, but With he's French. Yeah, there's Bat Batum. I don't Batum. see any. All right, wait. Yeah, so what are you saying? Uh, no, I was, I was just saying, like, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting a rebuild on all sides, with the exception of the Capitals, which are, in, they're the one team that might should be rebuilding, right? But they're just putting off a rebuild to engineer Ovi to get to the goal, to the uh, goal record, which I'm fine with, but it's tough. I I traded it all for the for the James Madison Dukes. But that's what I did. What what did it cost me? Everything. Yeah, but here's here's how you rank it as a sports fan. You obviously number one, you want your teams competing for titles. But I think number two is is rebuilds. Number three is no man's land. And now I get to root root for the uh, Bears to lose all their games, so that second round pick basically becomes a first round. Look, pick. we're aligned. Yeah, we're fully aligned. I like that. I am a believer in polls, except for the one Hank put in the parking lot. But I think that he definitely has a plan in place to get a full, like a, a big extension for sweat. And then with young going out to the Niners, I would like to officially announce I'm all in on the Niners. Now I, Tr Trent Williams, chase young, Kyle Shanahan. I said this on, on Monday's show, but if you're a, a fan of a shitty franchise, the best you can do sometimes is to just root for your guys to win somewhere. So I, I'm, I'm going to put a big future on the Niners. They're my team. They're friends of the program, Hank. Yes. As you know very well, mm -hmm. uh, Kittle, all those guys. Now is the time to buy in on the Niners because it's buy low, sell high. And I like what the Niners did in the fact that um, their secondary has been getting torched, and they're like, you know what we'll do? We'll just make sure the quarterback can never throw. Yeah. I, I just beef it up even more. Just run the ball. Just defense is going to be awesome. Yeah. Play with the lead. This, You know what this is? They're making it so they never have to play from behind. Yes. And just have their defense be nasty as hell. Yes. Yes. So, uh, yeah, the NFL trade deadline, uh, it's ending right now, actually, as we're taping this. Um, and that was the, the Josh Dobbs to the Minnesota Vikings. Yep. Uh, I feel like Josh Dobbs probably pissed about this because he's got to keep playing football. And um, it hasn't gone well recently. Well, the best thing he can hope for is their their backup in Minnesota, who's starting this week. Right, Jaron Hall. Jaron Hall, he steps in and plays well. Or Nick well. Mullins when he comes back. And then he just gets to chill up in Minnesota We for do a while. get to watch Kyler Murray. Yeah. He, that you would assume. I think Clayton Toon might be starting for the Cardinals this week. He might be starting this week and then Murray yeah. next week. Yeah, and then was there any other big trades? Uh, the Jets just signed Roger Saffold to the practice squad with the intent to promote him to the active roster. Oh, he was on huge the Bills. Move. He was on the Bills last year. So Donovan Peoples Jones is going to uh, the Lions. Detroit. Yeah, who, by the way, that was the most maddening uh, Monday Night Football game I've ever watched. As someone who bet on the Lions, they should have won by 50. It's and impossible. they just let the Raiders hang around, even though the Raiders are dog shit. They're very bad. They're hard to watch. Jimmy Garoppolo had two missed passes to uh, Devontae Adams that would have netted, I think, like 160 yards worth of touchdowns. And one, he just threw the ball out of bounds by like 10 yards. The other, he overthrew him by five. Jimmy is, uh, I feel like Jimmy's not old Jimmy. Yeah, he's not old Jimmy. I have a thing with Devontae Adams, so... It's become everyone is like, oh, poor Devontae Adams. He should be a free agent. I actually liked Robert Mays, who's a very good writer. Uh, he had a, a great idea, which would be awesome, that we vote every single trade deadline and one player just gets, for, like the best players, one player in the entire league gets released 
and the team gets a draft compensation, and then that player immediately becomes a free agent. So like Devontae that. Adams was a free agent right this second, and the Raiders get a draft pick. Like, they get the 33rd pick. That would rule. But C- Counterpoint, he would go to the Chiefs, and we'd be like, what the fuck? That's probably true. But Devontae Adams, so I feel bad that he's playing for a bad team. But he wanted to go to the Raiders. Yeah, he made he that He said choice. that. He said he wanted to be close to the West Coast with his family. Yes, he obviously also said he wanted to play with Derek Carr, who then got, uh, who's now on the Saints. But it wasn't like Devontae Adams, like, he had a say in, in how this all went down. You can make a choice. Right. And then your choice is, okay, you're going to opt for a big contract somewhere else. And knowing that the NFL is a business, you might not be around the same guys for forever. I think there should be an end-of-season award. To either like most misused guy mm-hmm. or um, guy that you just feel bad for. Really good player that you feel bad for, but looked like they were trying trying their hardest this year. See, they, I get, don't, they get like a vacation somewhere. I don't feel bad for Devontae Adams. You you willingly chose to go to Josh McDaniels. I respect what Devontae Adams did after the game, which was they asked him, like, how are you feeling right now? And he just said, I don't have words that I can say that won't get me in trouble. Mm. So these are my words that I'm going to say right now because I don't know how else to express myself other than saying, fuck this entire organization. That happens all the time on the show and then we make the person say it. Yeah. And then we get to the bad points. Then we get then we yeah. get to Justin Fields is wearing sunglasses. Right. I don't like that. Or PNVs. Or PNVs. Yeah, that right. Sort of like thing. this is how we go. So credit to Vontae Adams for, for holding his tongue there. The Lions, by the way, Jameer Gibbs is awesome. I love that they like they, I think they just decided, like, this is going to be Jameer Gibbs' coming out party. We're going to game plan everything. He was sensational. And the Lions, it felt like they corrected. Like, they should have won by more. They still have some things to clean up. But you obviously needed to see a win after that Ravens loss and especially them going into the bye week. And don't wear those jerseys anymore. Yeah, they're gross. The Fifty Shades of Grey ones. Ugh. Uh, I, I didn't really like their throwback helmets either. No. I like the Lions. The Lions have great the Lions, uniforms. The Lions' normal Blue. jerseys are their throwback uniforms. I feel yes. like they haven't changed that much in, in the last, like, 30 years. But uh, they got – there were some bad plays by the Lions in the red zone. Jared threw that one pick six. And then his next pass, I think, went – I think he threw it out of bounds and tried to hit the mascot with it, the next throwaway that he had. So the pick six was bad. Uh, was it was it Reynolds that got tackled and yeah like there's well, he no, made a great catch and then he just fumbled the ball. There's no physical way that the human body can not not Reynolds and um which was a running back that got tackled and fumbled oh. and you couldn't see the replay. I th- that might have been Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, the, where they kept on zooming in and they're like, is the shin there? Is there's the shin. N- there the way that the human body is built. There's no chance that he wasn't down. But they didn't have a camera angle showing that he was down, which is crazy. So they just they they gave it to the Raiders. Put everyone, put sensors on everyone. Yeah, sure. Yeah, like like uh, Madden style. Yeah, like have them all wear those suits during games, yeah. and then we can tell. Yeah, I think maybe we're all wrong about Josh McDaniels. Maybe he is an offensive genius, but maybe there's just no players that are good enough to play football at the level that Josh McDaniels expects. Mm-hmm. In order for his his offense only works if it's Tom Brady and Randy Moss running it, and if it's anybody else then it just looks like the biggest nightmare you've ever seen. So this is Josh McDaniels is actually like Van Gogh, but yeah. we've only given him a pack of crayons. I think in, in 200 years, we're going to look back and be like, Josh McDaniels was so far ahead of his time. A misunderstood a genius. Misunderstood genius, 100%. Yeah. The most misunderstood genius because that guy sucks. He sucks. He, he sucks. sucks. He sucks. He sucks. All right, anything else with trade deadlines or NFL? Uh, Max, are you sad that this, the Eagles did nothing? Um, like Kevin Byard. All right, I was, I was, I was seeing if you were gonna catch that. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You I was, I was, was hoping for more. I was definitely you, hoping walked, for more. Max walked by and he just goes, "Patrick Sertain's gonna be an eagle." Uh, that I was, was like, that, I didn't believe that. I was just, you, you were, were just like saying the, it. You were like, "What's gonna happen?" I was like, Pat, "Maybe Patrick Sertain eagle." Nothing ever happens <laughs> at the NFL trade deadline. That's the one common denominator. Like the big news that we had this year was. Uh, like two defensive ends getting traded. Yeah, th- this that, was that, actually that was the it. most. This was probably the most that's happened in a trade deadline in a while because yeah. it was the Commanders were like we're trading everyone. And it wasn't just. It was Josh Harris had a big day today. Josh Harris won. I'm gonna say it. He won. He won the Sports Equinox. Yeah, because he traded Sweat and Young, got a second and a third round pick for him, which is better than some people thought that we would get. Does it? Does it make you? A little bit upset that Young went for a third rounder. No, Chase Young only has one move. Yeah, because I think that he stinks. I think Sweat's better. Yeah, I do too. Um, so he traded those two guys, and then he also traded James Harden. So big day for Josh Harris. Huge. Day. Apparently, he got on the phone with Steve Ballmer and was like, "Please, please take my man." Yeah. So I need you to do this. So are you happy that James Harden is out of your life, Max? James Harden, by the way, was traded 
at 2 in the morning. Probably the biggest win for Woj ever. Where do you think James Harden was when he found out? Strip club? Strip club. Strip club for sure. Uh, I know where Woj they was. They brought out like a, a bottle service for him. Yeah. And the flashing lights that just said, you are an L.A. Clipper. I, I, I know where Woj was because I want to give credit to Woj because, you know, he's got a rivalry with Shams and, I you know, Woj getting up there in age. I, this was... The pinnacle of Woj. This was Woj being like asserting himself. I still got it. He he dropped like a 12 minute podcast today. So I listened to it on the way to work. Woj said that he was at the airport at Newark airport getting ready to fly to L.A. And someone told him, don't get on that flight. And he sat in the airport until like two in the morning, then went home and took a shower and then went and took a flight that like the next morning. Cause he knew, cause, cause he didn't want to miss it. He's like, I didn't want to be on a plane for when this news came down. That is, he gets journalist of the year. It's commitment. Yeah. I mean, do you, can you imagine anything worse than sit being sitting at the gate of your plane ready to go, and then being like, nope, I have to now sit in the airport waiting for this news to drop, and then go home for ten minutes, take a shower, and then to get on another plane. If you were Woj, was there like a small part of you that was like, man, what if? What if this flight crashes? Yeah. And I was told not to get on it because I broke the James flight. Harden news. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, but Woj good, deserves the credit. Good, good for, he got it. Two good, in the morning. Good for Woj. He he absolutely deserves it. And then Shams woke up and I think he had to like tack Sh on. Shams. Was he like six hours late on the news? Yeah. Shams is never going to sleep again. Yeah. He's going to become an insomniac. You can't do that. Like Woj just, he, he basically said, hey, I ain't going anywhere. This yeah. is my block. James Harden individually has done so much for Woj's career just with all the trades yeah. and trade demands that he's made over the years. So that was my question is, is James Harden, like he's not the GOAT, but he's got GOAT tendencies because he somehow has gotten traded now three times where everyone's like, he's got no leverage. He's lost all his leverage. He... He deserves at least respect for being how bad of like a teammate and employee he is, right? Yeah. The, like he's the goat at that. And he also eats everything like a goat. I yep. think that he's done a great job of forcing his way out of teams in new and creative ways. This one we everyone was like, no, he's got no leverage. Daryl Morey would never trade him. He'll he'll always wait for the deal. What are we, one week into the season? His leverage was like, that guy's a liar. I'm gonna go to China, put on a basketball camp, mm -hmm. and call my boss a liar. And that's the last move that I have. And, and it worked. And Dale Morey probably was like, oh, uh, Tyrese Maxey's playing really well. And this team could be good. And you know what? The only thing that could ruin it is having James Harden hang out in their locker room. Yeah. So I have a so question. smart move by them. I have a question for you, Big Cat. Yeah. Right now, LA Clippers, they've got Kawhi. Yeah. Super team. They've got Westbrook. Super team. They've got playoff P, Paul Super Joyce, team. who's, by the way, getting back on his bully shit this year. Mm -hmm. And now they add the final piece in James Harden. My question for you is. Wow. How many balls are there? There's only one ball. There's just one ball. This team is loaded. This team is hilarious. They need to bring John Wall back. I can't wait to watch this team win one playoff series, have all VSPN be like, watch out for the Clippers, and then lose like four to one against the Nuggets. I don't even know if they're going to win one playoff series. They might win one. They're, I'm going to give them one just because I want to see it for the uh, discourse. They're the funniest team in the NBA by far. I don't think that there's a close second either. And I don't think Westbrook and Harden like each other anymore. Didn't Remember when they played briefly again was it with the rockets mm -hmm. i can't keep track i uh i would be shocked if they like each other yeah or i tell you what they'll probably like say all the right things do all the right things they'll be like uh oh this is title town watch out we got a super team and then things will blow up within probably a month or two i would imagine yeah it does it does feel like um i mean playoff p is is basically the guy that you need to like he's got to be the glue guy yeah i think he does because you have Kawhi who we know his history. Uh, he's a robot, but the robot sometimes malfunctions. And then Westbrook and Harden, yeah, playoff P has to sit everyone down and be like, I'm I'm the captain. But as a robot, do you think that Kawhi is kind of built for this type of situation? Where if you, yeah, no, if you I, are a computer program, you don't care who's entering the code. Yeah. You don't care who's pushing the buttons. You just take the input and then you do your thing. Yeah, no, Balmer just has to like go into the mainframe and say, pass ball to James Harden now. Yeah. Or and blue, Kawhi's like, okay, I got it. Blue screen of death on Kawhi. Uh, the other, the other big part of this uh, trade uh, and a hilarious part is uh, your guy, Max Furkan Korkmaz. You love him, right? He's fine. Korkmaz is the uh, direct opposite of James Harden because he has now asked for a trade from the Sixers three times and been not denied every single time. So in 2018, he asked for a trade because he didn't get playing time. 
They were like, nah, we're not going to do it. In uh, 2023, last winter, January, he asked for a trade. They're like, nah, we're not going to do it. You're, Korkmaz, you're, you're here forever. This time, he asked for a trade, and both the Clippers and Sixers said no. That's tough. That's tough. <laughs> I, what's going on with this guy? I don't know, but you got you got to see like Harden getting traded, and you're like, what? What? Why won't you do that, that for me? me? I want everything for me. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a guy just keep asking for trades, and the Sixers are like, he after the 2018, he re-signed with the Sixers. This poor guy. I've also never seen a bench player ask, ask for, for a, a trade. trade so many times. Like, and, and never seen a guy ask for a trade, and both sides say no. I guess you should be happy that the Sixers said no because that means they want him. But the Clippers were like, no, we don't want him. So he set up the trade. He wanted. He was like, throw me in this James Harden trade, and both sides were like, no, thank you. No, you're too. You will. You will blow up. This deal if you're you're in it that's tough but Ma- Mets, i mean the poor guy so i'm starting to think more about the clippers losing the first round take uh james harden when he was on the nets he wasn't he wasn't the primary ball handler right it, it, yeah so, and they, they had the the season where uh he Kyrie got hurt and then the game against game seven against the box in the second round that kevin durant almost single-handedly got them there but james harden had also gotten hurt that series he was playing Okay, yeah. up until then. We're also forgetting that James Harden in the playoffs is not... He doesn't want to play anymore. What if James he Harden... wants to go home. He had some good games. What if Yeah, James, but he want, Max, that's the thing about James Harden. He does not care about winning championships. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing about James Harden. I'm saying it's somewhat relatable, where you get paid less money in the playoffs. There's no real incentive to win unless you're a guy that cares about winning. James Harden, I think, does not care about winning NBA titles. He just wants to go home. He, he He's done his bid. His season's over. He fulfilled his contract that year. Now he wants to go hang out and party. Like, I, I get it. I get why James Harden does it. I feel like most professional athletes that are that good are not wired like that. They're wired to want to compete and win. But James Harden, I feel like, is just like, you know what? I'd rather just go hang out on my couch. It would rule if James Harden was awesome in the midseason tournament because it's yeah. not at the end of the year. Yeah. And he was just like the greatest midseason tournament player of all time. He might be because those... That counts as a regular season game, right? Yeah. yeah. It's right in the middle of the season. You don't have to worry about getting on a, a, a yacht. He's good. So you're good. You're you're happy, obviously, Max. Um You got some you got some I, flexibility too. You got you got picks. You got pick you got picks. So if somebody comes available at bait some em. point. <laughs> yeah, you got bait him. Um the only thing I woke up and I was upset because it was kind of like a strong arm of like Darren Mori was like, I'm not gonna trade him without Terrence Mann. And the Clippers were like, Well, well we're not giving up Terrence Mann. And I don't like oh, no. so not winning that battle. You got but, fleeced. Like at the end of the day, you got four picks. I guess you got a couple depth pieces. Rocco's not the player that he that he once was, but you got a bully. Morris is a bully. Yeah, you and got it, a dog. Like, you, you know, got, he. I think that's all he does. You, he's just but that's fine. Like yeah. you got like that's that's an intimidating lineup if you can put Pat Bev and and Morris. I think it's Marcus he's, Marcus Morris on the floor. At the, the goal is though to put the ball in the hoop. Yeah, but like you I mean, like Marcus some intimidation. Like a hundred years yeah. old. Yeah, but, but, but he, is, he is a bully. He's I a bully. Max. He's a dog. But now you got two dogs. Max, you're building a football team for basketball. That's fine. And you got assets. If someone else becomes available in the middle of the season, more you can go make another play. And you have time to, like, if it waited too long and then somebody came up and then you didn't have any assets, then you wouldn't have any have any more moves left in the chamber. Sixers, Sixers could be back, and Tyrese Maxey's MVP. That's the that's the end of the, the the whole story. Is that Tyrese Maxey is playing like an all star right now? But you already have an MVP. I know, but like on you, your team you, right now, what if you you could have two? No, you only have one. Well, you could have one last year and then one this year. Right, but last year was kind of was he really the MVP? Yeah, he was. Okay, the answer is yes. Uh, the real test is it's always like coming from your direct opponent. Like, does the, are you more fearful of the Sixers this year, Hank? Or would you be <laughs> no? <laughs> would you be more fearful? Hank's living in Porzingis heaven right now. If they now. still had, if got, they still had no James rings. Harden, would you be more fearful? What? Hank's got no rings. He said 2008. <laughs> <laughs> he just farted on th- the big three. I was a freshman in high school. He just farted on it. Yeah, I'm just saying, like you're you you're acting like the Celtics are this sick team. You haven't won shit yet. The Sixers haven't won anything. Neither are the Celtics. Mm. Okay, but the question was, are you scared of the Sixers? Yeah, are you are you not. more scared of them now than you were 24 hours well, ago? Well, he wasn't scared of them 24 hours ago, so how could he be and more I'm scared? Le- but I'm less <laughs> but you're scared le- less scared. You're you can't scared be less now. scared. You, no can, way you, you can't, can't be less. I can, it can be the playing. same. James Harden won a game for them in the playoffs against the Celtics. Okay, maybe year. he's less scared. 
Batum is not going to do that. The four <laughs> picks that you're are probably going to amount to nothing are not going to do that. But, uh, but the, it's James not, Harden, it's not like won game one for them last year, and you were like, you can't do this after everything bad that you say about James Harden. You can't go, you can't say like, I James Harden can, sucks, James Harden it. sucks, and then you now are like, well, James Harden won a game for you guys last week. But like, I'm less scared because there, you're not, you're team, not less he scared. He has the chance to beat us in a, you know. But he was never going to play. I think Hank's less scared. I believe him. I, th- I believe him, too. I, he seems less scared. Mm-hmm. He's not, though. He it, seems like. It, Hank was terrified yesterday. And, yeah, Porzingis is – is the, the Celtics are unbelievable. I got home last night. It was like 620. It's kind of weird uh, central time getting home. I forget. I'm like, oh, yeah, Celtics are on. Game's I'm like, on, oh, yeah. shit, the game's already on. It was already over. First quarter, Wizards. Well, Jordan, they're up like Jordan Poole's forty the points. Most hilarious basketball. Jordan ever. Poole just shoots up everything. Yep. Yeah, the Wizards. I mean, it's obviously the Wizards poverty well, franchise. You don't have but. to say that part of it. You can just say Jordan Poole is Jordan Poole is the perfect player to have on your team if you're trying to tank. Mm-hmm. To have him as like the guy on your team, it doesn't get any better than that. Are you scared of Tyrese Maxey? No. Why? What? What's there to be scared of? <laughs> he's he's emerging as one of as he's one emerging. of the best guards in the NBA. Do you have anyone now emerging? He has, now he has the opportunity that that backcourt is his. Oh, mm. good I, point. See, I feel like the last year and a half, Max is just he's like trying to make fetch happen. Mm-hmm. He's like Tyrese Maxey MVP emerging. No, this this MVP. is now like this is real. No, he is playing incredible. He, this is real. No, I know he, he has started. He was I mean, Eastern Conference Player games. of the Week. Yeah. Of the week. <laughs> First week. There's only been one Say week. Again. Hang the banner. Of the week. Hang There's the banner. There's only been one week. If the MVP was given out today, he would win it. That, he, that's actually fact. Or at least in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. He Hank, won the Eastern Conference Player of the Week uh, MVP. Hank was not scared until he said he's the Player of the Week. And now I, I saw I yeah, saw that, some fear creeping. Max, you got to go back to the drawing board on that. No, I mean, no, anytime no. you do a Player of the Week, it's it's not great. But I, that's, all, that's all you can base it off of. Right. What we have seen so far this year, Tyrese Maxey is the best player in the Eastern Conference. Fact mm-hmm. or fiction? Probably fiction. Fa- uh, well, no. One Eastern Conference you all, of the week. You, that, that is fact. You're wrong, Hank. Weak. Um, okay. Uh, Razul Douglas, by the way, just got traded to the Bills. That's mm-hmm. a good pickup for the Bills. Yeah, they need. he's a, a quarterback. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Little baseball choose your own adventure. World Series going on. There were people who were uh, upset at me for watching Monday Night Football. Uh, I was also watching the World Series, but... The World Series is going on. Mm-hmm. Rangers, Diamondbacks, choose your own adventure. PFT, go. Diamondbacks win. Garcia's got an oblique. He's, he does. He's not going to play tonight. Is that official? No, I'm just making this up right now, but this is choose your own adventure. Yep. Uh, he's not going to play. Doesn't doesn't want to win. A real gamer would play through it. Dan Heron cooks up something special. I think so, too. I'm going to say it's a shootout. Oh. Yeah, I think it's going to be 10-8 Diamondbacks. Okay. Game four, 10-8 Diamondbacks. Um, if anything crazy happens, we will uh, record something if anything crazy happens. If there's like a You'll no have hit. known some crazy Well, happens. yeah, you'll know because we'll, we'll put it in. Uh, if there's like a no-hitter in the World Series, that, that would be crazy. That would be crazy. I it's been almost a year since that's happened. I think it's going to be 8-1 D-backs. Whoa. I think Fam goes yard twice. Whoa. Longoria has two hits. Whoa. Hank? I'm going to go 6 to 5 in the 14th. What? Wait, walk but off, that walk. might be crazy. We might yeah. I don't want to stay up that late. Who wins? D-backs. D-backs. Well, if it's a walk off, it's D-backs. True. That's yeah. on me. Yeah. D- walk off D-backs. I knew they were at home. Yeah, you yep. knew <laughs> that. You've been tuned in. Is the roof open? Uh, no. It's closing. They've been night. closing it, I think. Okay, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't either. Open and up. also the the dehumidifier thing they did with the Diamondbacks, I don't like that either. They did it a few years ago. Everyone stopped hitting home runs. I don't like it. I did. I saw Randy Johnson threw out the first pitch yesterday. That's cool. It was very cool. To I, Luis Gonzalez. To Luis Gonzalez. It was wild. Yeah. I, w- I was hoping so hard for a bird. Yeah. That would have that rocked. Did you see the I ho- kind of forgot that, that the Yankees had a 3-2 yes. to two lead going into the ninth of that game. I thought it was tied. What? I watched an old video. Young uh, Kim? No, wait. Oh, you're no, talking about World 2001. Series. Yeah, no, they should have won that World they Series. They were up three to two. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Going into right the ninth. 9 yeah. yes. yes. Should we have the robot umps discussion? There were some bad calls yesterday. Yeah, there were, but some some, I always calls. think they even them out. I they I saw someone was saying that there is the technology they're working on that you can you can basically tap your helmet and they can go check it real quick so it doesn't slow down the game, which I'm in favor of. The immediate review for it. Yeah, the immediate review. But then I don't know. I like I like the human element of umpiring. I do like getting mad at umps. And I also like 
getting, you know, you, you start a game, it's like, okay, this is the strike zone. Now we got to adjust. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not uniform across the board. It does add to the gamesmanship. If you're like planning out how you're going to attack somebody at the plate and you know that this one up has like a very wide strike zone, then you can you can pitch them accordingly. That's how the Atlanta Braves won so many games. Yeah. was get, They had Eric Gregg calling pitches like three inches off the plate every day. So Maddox would get up there and just be like, okay, backdoor, backdoor cutter. All yeah. That. I, uh, I'm a firm believer that if you can add replay without slowing down the game whatsoever, which is basically impossible, then I'm for it. Mm-hmm. But it's impossible. Yeah. I I do like the idea that you can get mad at somebody and blame a loss on somebody. Yeah. That's always Yeah, fun. right. It's if you take it away, then you don't have anything to get, to get mad at. All right. Uh, let's talk some college football. Before we do that, new sponsor alert. McDonald's is a sponsor. Pardon my take. McDonald's just Yum. dropped two sauces. Sweet and spicy jam and mambo sauce. It's exciting. We actually had some a couple weeks ago. They are so delicious. The mambo sauce is unbelievable. Incredible. It's so, so good. Incredible. Sweet and spicy jam goes great with breakfast. What McD's uh, breakfast is your favorite? Uh, Mickey D's breakfast. I'm going to go with sausage, egg, and cheese bagel. Yes. We went to McDonald's for breakfast on Saturday morning before we went up to Madison, and it is the best. I Still mean, the, the best. technology to whoever invented the McGriddle is probably one of the greatest scientists of our generation yes Mm -hmm. agreed so if you like spicy sauce mambo sauce and sweet and spicy jam both pack a kick it's available for a limited time only at a participating locations get them with your next order as they're only available for a limited time only mcdonald's does great sauces the mambo sauce the sweet and spicy jam it's a limited time only so get out there get it it is uh approved by us because we have had it we got to test it. It is so delicious. So go get it right now. The mambo sauce and sweet and spicy jam at your local McDonald's. And again, limited time only. So go get it right now. You don't know how long it's going to be there. It is the best. McDonald's, thank you for being a sponsor. Get that su- sweet and spicy jam with your breakfast. I think that the mambo sauce is now my number one sauce of all fast food restaurants. Wow. If you look across the board... Mambo skyrocketed to number one. It's I, it's legit. It is very, very good. Uh, okay, so go go check that out now, the, the Mambo sauce and the sweet and spicy jam at McDonald's. Okay, let's talk some college football. Uh, the college football playoff rankings are coming out. Uh, we are taping this earlier. It's Halloween, uh, so I got to go do Halloween with my kids. I don't think there's – the first rankings are always funny because people freak out. There's still so much football left to be played. If I had to take a guess, I would think that Ohio State will be one, and then it'll be Georgia and Michigan in a two, three. I don't know. They probably Georgia, then Michigan, and then four would be Florida State, five would be Washington. Would be my guess. Ohio State only because they do probably have the best resume on paper with a Penn State win and a Notre Dame road win. Yeah, so that's that's probably going to be the only debate. I think it might be Georgia. But I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, I don't think State. Ohio State's better than Georgia. They I'm put just these, saying resume-wise. They, they put these rankings out knowing that people will get mad about numbers, and then there's a lot of season left, and they know that if a certain team, like if Georgia beats Alabama, then Georgia's probably going to become the number one team in the entire country. Right, yeah. right. And, I yeah, it could very well be that Ohio State, they could just go exactly as the AP top 25 or the coaches poll where it's Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State, uh, Washington, straight down in a row. I wouldn't be surprised if they do that as well. I just think that if you're just looking at resumes, Ohio State having that win at Notre Dame and against Penn State is better than what any win Michigan's done so far. And Georgia, yeah, and Georgia. Yeah, I'm, I want to see simulated brackets for next year. That's mm-hmm. what I want to see. It's like, what would the matchups look like right now if we were doing a 12-team playoff? Give me a simulated bracket. For, for You're saying this year for next this year? This year for next yeah, yeah. year. Because next year, this is the last one. This yeah. is the last four-team playoff. Thank God we're going to get to the 12-team playoff. Um, I'm excited, though. And I uh, I think I, I talked about it on this show. I, I did s- officially switch my Washington future to Oregon before last weekend. I do think Oregon, what they did in Utah on Saturday, like that doesn't happen to Utah. They bullied them. Yeah. They or- bullied them. Oregon, it, it's weird because even though they lost to Washington – they look like they're the best team in that conference right, right. Now. Because Washington has had, what, is it two weeks in a row where they've had these wins that feel like, holy yep. shit, I can't believe we got out of there with a win? Arizona stayed at home and Stanford on the road. They yeah. both were uh, like one-score games in the fourth quarter, and it feels like something's a little off. They have a few big games coming up. Uh, I, though, this weekend coming up, obviously everyone's going to talk about Bama LSU, um, which – 
fun trivia fact. You ready for this? The last, so Jaden Daniels obviously beat Nick Saban last year uh, when Alabama went to Baton Rouge. Who is the last quarterback to beat Nick Saban two years in a row? Two years in a row. Same quarterback, two years in a row. Joe didn't do it. So Jamarcus Russell. Uh, who else was there? Tebow. Matt, Matt mm -mm. Flynn. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Cam Newton. Mm -mm. Oh, we're no, not close. We're once. not close. The it's a fun one. Aaron, Aaron Murray. Nope. His name was Drew Brees at oh. Purdue. Wow. So when he was at Pretty Michigan crazy. State. Yes. When Saban was at. Yes. Okay. Isn't that crazy? That is wild. Yeah. So Jaden Daniels looking to be that uh, second guy to beat Nick Saban two years in a row. That's shocking. Yeah. But I guess if you're a good college quarterback and you happen to be good enough to beat Nick Saban, you're probably going to go to the NFL. The next or year. you'll come back and Nick Saban will beat you. Yeah. Because he doesn't lose to teams twice in a row. Or like Nick that. Saban will have moved to a different school. Yes. But yeah. So the, obviously everyone's talking about Bama uh, LSU this weekend, which will be a great game. I'm, I I'm pumped for the Big Twelve this weekend. The yes. Big Twelve is going to Big Twelve is the funnest conference in the country. It was basically the entire Big Twelve looked like garbage in September, and now all these teams are playing incredible ball. And you have uh, Kansas State going to Texas. You have Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State was dead uh, in September, and now they're back playing good ball. Like Kansas beating Oklahoma last week. It's mm -hmm. just utter chaos in the Big 12, and now we have a weekend where we're going to kind of try to figure everything out. Who did Oklahoma State lost to a uh, like a Sun Belt school in week one, right? Oklahoma State, I don't know. I, I know I, Iowa State's also in that category because Iowa State is 4-1 and one in the conference. They lost to Ohio. Remember when Matt Campbell was getting yelled at by uh, fans? Yep. They lost to uh, – Oklahoma State lost to South Alabama week three. Yeah. Um. So my, my only qualm with the Big 12 schedule this weekend – is Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. I know you're going to say this, and I agree. They're playing it at, at 3.30 in the afternoon Eastern. Yep. That game, Bedlam, should be played at night. Mm -hmm. It should be played at night. Yep. I say it every year. Yep. The sky in Stillwater, Oklahoma, is the darkest sky in the world. It's neon black. The atmosphere at Bedlam at nighttime is crazy. That game should be at night. Agreed. This is the last time they're going to do Bedlam for a long time, right? Mm-hmm in the foreseeable future, and we're getting it in the afternoon. It stinks. That's an abomination to God. I saw it, and I was I, I had the exact same feeling of you. I got instantly bummed out. I was like, why is this game at 2.30? That sucks. It makes no sense. Um, but shout out to Kansas. Okay, do you think that was the, the win against Oklahoma? That might have been the biggest win in the history of Kansas football. They Well, that win against Recent Texas. Uh, I'm not counting that last because, year because year before. Kansas didn't have a very good team. Their team right. was like – their team's good this year. Yeah. Well, they and they're doing it with their backup quarterback who stayed. He lost the job and stayed. I think he's a six-year uh, beard, I believe is his name is. That was awesome. They had not beaten Oklahoma in forever. Mm -hmm. I don't even know the last time they beat Oklahoma. I'm going to actually look it up because I think it's something insane. Uh, but, yeah, that was an awesome, awesome game. Lance Leipold is an awesome coach. Yeah. He won a million games at White Whitewater. He went to Buffalo, now at Kansas. But, yeah, that the Big 12 is fun. Yeah. There's just a bunch of teams – that are all kind of was were kind of written off for various reasons, poor play, injuries, and everyone's like, "Oh, it's going to be Texas, it's going to be Oklahoma," and now we get a weekend where it's like it could very well not. Like I could see Oklahoma State beating Oklahoma, I could beat Kansas State beating Texas. It could all upend. Do we know what's happening with Quinn Ewers? Is he on track to play this weekend? I think that he is, right? Uh, I believe so. All right, this is the longest. No, there's okay as of right now. Malik Murphy is in line to start against Kansas State. They they killed BYU, but he's he's not as good as Quinn Ewers. Uh, it had been the first time Kansas had beaten Oklahoma since 1999, so this century. That's crazy. Uh, but but yeah, Quinn Ewers being out against Kansas State is a big deal. Malik Murphy he's playing right now for the transfer window. Yeah, for the portal. Yeah, that's what he's playing for. Uh, because it's, it's weird they just don't like. I I get it, Arch is a big name, but like, I feel like no one's even talked about it. Like it's not even floated out there that he could potentially. Oh, it was last week. It was. Yeah. So he was, he was in line to take okay. some snaps. He's ready to go. But like Malik Murphy, I, I still pay attention to um, like Austin sports talk radio because I listened to it for like 10 years. So I'm not a Longhorns fan, but I am a fan of the takes around the program. It's like endlessly fascinating to me. The stuff that goes on at the university of Texas Murphy. A lot of people were saying like was better than Quinn Ewers when he got on campus and they've been asking to see Malik Murphy. I think what we've seen is that Murphy's not as good, but if he plays well this weekend, then next year 
there's going to be some football team that's going to be very, very excited to have Malik Murphy. Yeah, and K- Kansas State's really good. They're 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 successfully pulling off a two quarterback offense, Will Howard and Avery Johnson. I love that, and it's they're just a good team. I yeah, I, I the Big Twelve is the most fun conference. I think it will be going forward too because you have all these weird teams that are getting added, um, who have been added, but. Uh, it's a big weekend coming up. It's a big weekend coming up. I feel like we're going to get, you know, if LSU can somehow take down Alabama and Tuscaloosa, they're now very much back in the picture. Uh, and then the entire big 12 is going to get figured out. You have the USC Washington game, which should have like a billion points because USC, they were very close to being like, this team is fully quit. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really like, I, there was a quote afterwards, Caleb Williams. I don't think their team has quit. I feel like their defense has quit. I, I think maybe their whole team, like they, they, I mean, their defense maybe hasn't quit because they've always been bad. So they're just playing the same. Yeah. Lincoln Riley's kind of a genius because he, he can kind of just get into a situation where he will never be on the hot seat, but his defensive coordinator will always be on the hot yes. seat. Uh, yeah. Alex Grinch. Uh, Cale Williams said after the Cal game, I had a few mistakes in the Notre Dame game, dumb passes that I threw uh, last week. I had, a 70% completion or something like that. This is talking about the game against Utah. So I had one off day in the past three years. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's just. What, that's what Ryan Day said too. Yeah. Right? Just maybe just be like, you know what? We win as a team. We lose as a team. Yeah. Uh, and now I, I, love, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I love the report that he's, he's trying to get equity in an NFL team that drafts him. Yeah. That's, that's never going to happen. Never, gonna never going to, if, if the chiefs weren't going to give Patrick Mahomes equity, with his long-term deal. I think the NFL stepped in and said this can't no. happen in general. Yeah. But, yeah, for a, for a rookie to come in and become the owner of a team would be ridiculous. But my favorite story in college football just got another wrinkle. Oh, it's – Connor yeah. Stallion story. Yes. This, this might be – it's like this and then the pole assassin story from Texas from a couple years ago at Halloween. Uh, my two favorite stories in the history of college football. Connor Stallions was – Oh, you got to throw in uh, uh, our guy, the shark fucker. Oh, yeah, yeah, McElwain. Well, yeah. he's involved in this, too. And Bobby Petrino, just Bobby Petrino, just him. Putting on the, the neck brace. Everything with uh, him. I mean, Hugh Freeze coaching from the hospital bed. Yeah, I mean, college football, college football delivers. delivers. It's it good. just always delivers. It's good. So, um, Connor Stallions was photographed, or there was a still shot of him during the broadcast on the sidelines of the CMU-Michigan State game. Allegedly, it's him. There was from, also from one from a few year. years ago, yeah. And he's dressed up. He's wearing sunglasses. He's got a little goatee going. Got his hat pulled down real low. He's wearing what appears to be a sideline pass, like a pass that you would get if you were attending the game as uh, a fan, right? maybe not as a coach. And he's hanging out on the sidelines, allegedly trying to steal Michigan State signs, maybe passing Michigan State signs along to the CMU staff because he does have, I think there are two coaches on CMU right now that he coached with in his past or that he was, he was around in his past. So um, this story continues to get funnier and funnier and funnier to the point where it honestly wouldn't shock me if Stallions was like Jim Harbaugh's illegitimate son that he had 30 years ago and kept secret for so long just to bring along with the sole mission of making Michigan football national champions. That's exactly what he is. He So the only issue with the, the picture is I think the guy has hair in this picture. Connor Stallions doesn't. Either way. It's very funny that now Connor Stallions is Kaiser Soze. Every 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 fan base that hates Michigan will see Connor Stallions in every picture they look at. Yeah. And be like, he was here. Even so, the um, report about Ryan Day's brother, who I think he was in the CIA, and I think he does have a private investigating firm, but I think a Michigan fan just started the rumor that he was the one investigating the whole thing. Like, I don't think that's actually factual. I love that. And, and so all of these... Like, all of these stories, you could just say Connor Stallion did this, that. Where was he on January 6th? Mm-hmm. We don't know. We don't know at all. Right. Connor- Con- he's crazy. It's 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 such a funny, and the story's going to flip-flop like 17 more times. Yeah, there was, um, somebody made the point that if, uh, so CMU said that they're investigating whether or not that was him on the sidelines. It seems to me that if CMU saw the picture and recognized him as a member of their staff, they would just be like, no, that's our coach. Right. Like we, I know exactly who that right. guy is. You could look it up. The investigation should probably take no longer than 30 minutes. You'd to be determine like, does anyone know this guy? Who that is. Yeah. Hey, coach, yeah. do you know this guy? Who brought this guy to the party? And then Did he bring any chicks? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The fact that they haven't said that tells me it probably is. And I, I just, I love the story. So I'm just glad that Connor Stallions, 
I'm glad that he um, developed uh, an insane fixation on Michigan football instead of politics or religion. Yes. Because this would be very bad for the world if he wasn't just a college football freak. Or or like uh, if he was like an incel, it could have been very bad. Yeah, he this yeah. could have gone so far. We should thank our lucky stars every day that Connor Stallions chose to wrote his 500-page manifesto on college football. Right. And we also have had uh, Jim Harbaugh finally spoke, and he gave some great Jim Harbaugh quotes. Yeah. So this is one of them. He said, uh, Jim Harbaugh says Michigan football is like field corn instead of a house plant. He said, quote, House plants, they have their functions. They can be beautiful in the home. They can bring bring great beauty and value to a home. But the field corn, just drop a seed in a crack of a sidewalk and it will burrow down and come up with energy. Then rise up in a stock like fashion and start producing. Mm -hmm. So that is what Michigan football is right now. Uh, he also said, uh, I just channel my inner William Wallace when it comes to keeping a one-track mind focusing on football instead of everything else on the field. Uh-huh. Yeah, that that all checks out for Jim. I like the fact that he's he's become a corn expert, at yep. least a field corn expert. Yep. My theory is that uh, Harbaugh knows everything about Michigan football. Yes. At one point, he probably looked up what the word maize went because they're the maize and blue. Mm -hmm. Found out it had something to do with corn, and then did a deep dive on corn. Realized that corn is gritty, can grow anywhere. He's like, okay, that's why that's our color. Yes. That's how come he knows so much about corn. Yes. Yes. So he's. The whole thing is great. The story is incredible. We also had the conclusion, uh, the sad conclusion to the race of 325 with Brian Ferentz, uh, ha is going to continue coaching the rest of this year, and then he's been fired slash is walking away. I don't like that. I don't like the pre-firing. I don't like anything. I don't like it. Would It'd it be, be great though if it, he just ripped off yeah. a bunch of scores here? What if they just? What if they average 50 points a game for their last games? Like would that? It's in his contract, right? He can say, hey, we won this many games. Yeah. I brought my average up. And if he shows that he's improving at the end of the season, then his dad might just be like, yeah, you know what? He's You're my best boy. He's really come into himself <laughs> recently. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's it is sad to see because I was, I was actually hoping that Iowa was going to somehow make, against all odds, make the college football playoff averaging like 12 points a game. It would have been great. It would have been great. Uh, okay, so college football this weekend is going to tell us a lot. Very excited for it. Uh, let's – what do you got? One last thing? Yeah, one last thing. We have a new record, speaking of Iowa football, the lowest over-under total. Yes. In the history of college football. At Wrigley. At Wrigley Field. I might go. You should. I, I'm going to bet the over. I bet the over when it was the previous lowest total against Minnesota. I think it was 30 and a half. It was 32 and a half. 32 yeah. and a half. This is 29 and a half, 29 right? 29 and a half. It's Northwestern Iowa – I think I have to go to this game. When is and this? When is this game? It's Saturday. Saturday. You want to go at yeah. Wrigley? Yeah. yeah. You want to go? It's yeah. also bet the over. They finally yeah. okay. Uh, you'll you have, have to fucking... drive to Indiana to bet it. Yeah, I'll drive to Indiana and bet it. You will. That's the only part. I'm going to Northwestern. This is a twenty minute drive. This is maybe the dumbest thing I've ever done, and I I flew to Qatar for like sixteen hours for a tie. Yeah. <laughs> this game, I mean, this yeah. is dumber. This game is gonna rock, and and they did finally figure it out. I was uh, reminiscing. I'm, I, I'm rocking with Iowa though. The best was it, when they first did a game at Wrigley, a college game at Wrigley. They did it like maybe 10, 12 years ago, and they didn't measure the end zones correctly, and they had to play the game going one way. Oh, I, I remember think they should. I, I think they should play this game going one way. Yeah, I like it. It would be awesome. Yeah. That's, what about pick sixes? They, You could pick six it, but you can't. The offense starts going one way. That's sick. It's yeah. like a delayed penalty in hockey. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they painted the lines and everything, and they're like, wait, the outfield – wall goes right up to the end zone line this is a problem so what would happen if if you intercepted a pass they would they flip it no but you return you like on the interception return you're running all the way down the field somebody catches up behind you forces a fumble and it rolls like two yards into the end zone yeah i guess it would still kind of roll out kind of because it would hit the wall so they'd rule it out does i'm trying to think if that's that's bad for the over though yeah but I, and they have figured points. it out. They've played games at Wrigley since that they have figured it out. But that was one of the funniest things ever to play a game going one way. Yeah, they should do it for this game. Game of the year. They should also play this game like on a sixty-yard field. Yeah, or just, just give us some more points, or just not at all. Yeah, not at all. Uh, okay, let's get to our hot seat, cool throne. It's brought to you by our friends at Chevy. There's a new family with unstoppable grit, and they are the official partners of the Pardon My Take family, and that is. Chevy Silverado ZR2 family, the first ever Silverado 8 Heavy Duty ZR2, joins the franchise to make Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand 
with a full lineup of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventures take you with exclusive Multimatic DSSV dampers, rugged mud terrain tires, and up to 14 available camera views. The Chevy Silverado ZR2 and Silverado HD ZR2, a family with commanding and unstoppable grit. Head to Chevy.com, check out the Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s. The official trucks, a part of my take. Thank you to Chevy, a wonderful sponsor. If you're a truck person or want to be a truck person, do it in a Chevy. Chevy Silverado ZR2 and Silverado HD ZR2, a family with commanding and unstoppable grit. Hank, hot seat, cool throne. My hot seat is the Brew Crew, Chris Broussard. Mm, yeah. yeah. He was on TV today talking about the James Harden trade, and he referred to him using the R word. Mm-hmm. And well, to it. To be fair, he had a first cousin who was developmentally disabled. Correct. So kind of gets a pass on that. And Stu Finer was the one who broke the story. Yeah, Stu Finer was the one of that tweeted, tweeted the clip, and then it, you know, all the the media outlets picked it up. Suspended, fired. I is think it, he's is, it, is what? Where does that? Where do, where does okay. that word fall into the? I I think he's okay. Punishment rankings. It's, it's kind of like the five second rule with food. He said his apology within the same segment. I think he's okay. Like if he had not said anything and then he had to issue an apology the next day, it becomes a bigger story. He said his apology within forty five seconds of saying it. Okay. Like the ball was still so live. no suspension. No suspension. I don't know. I don't I think know. he's going to get I think he he's knew gonna, he didn't he, like he kind of wound up for it. Yeah, I mean it was it was a I hard. Don't, I don't think it's a suspension. It was, intr- it was an intrusive thought. And his first yeah. cousin. Yeah. He literally immediately who, who, was by like, the way, think on my feet, first cousin. Who by the way passed away. Yes. So, a month or two months ago, he didn't know. He didn't know when it was. <laughs> he but, was like a month, two uh, months. Uh, damn. But, but as far as an excuse goes for why you said it, that that might be the wildest reasoning behind why that word slipped out of your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no, somebody that I love very deeply. Yeah, I was who calling my cousin away. that. Yeah. yeah uh, I was at his funeral. <laughs> he was and also we were, that. we were dropping him left and right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Go ahead. <laughs> no, if no. you say sorry right away, you're okay. <laughs> no, yeah, he was like, no. Don't no, 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 Devontae no, no. Adams no. is a trust tree. They were at the funeral talking about, damn, like he, he kind of, he reminds us of James Harden. And yeah, that, right, and right, right. They were talking about how much That's they, they were remembering him being like, yeah he, yeah, he was so much like James Harden. Oh, yeah. Well, it was actually, I think he was saying it to Nick Wright because Nick Wright had a take he disagreed with. Yeah. So but he yeah, went like oh, old school. Yeah. Are, he always said, are, are you? you? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought yeah, he yeah. said, is James Harden? No, he, mm. he, Chris Broussard just slipped back into like, Sixth grade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. It's crazy. Uh, and then McCool Throne's getting your butthole fingered. Oh. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, Leo DiCaprio was at a party, uh, and there's pictures of him getting his butthole fingered. So mm-hmm. it's it's the new craze. Is it the new craze? I mean, if Leo's doing it, it's kind of like. Yeah. I mean, it's the Shane Gill Street. Guys can't have fun anymore. What yeah. are we making a big deal about this? I think, was that TMZ that got it? Yeah, she was like, you know, they were, she was over, under, going over the top, down the pants. A little swipe. Right. Little Digging swipe. for gold. Yeah. Do you guys, um, I don't want I to. I don't, know. I don't want to bring more publicity to this, but I'll, I'll just ask it. Do, do you guys know Butthole Barry? No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know yeah, Butthole it Barry. sucks. Yep. There's a guy named Butthole Barry who replies to our tweets with just his butthole. Yeah. Well, we don't know. I think it's his butthole because it's, it's guys, taken from yeah, such an angle. You guys that are on, it's butthole berries. He's he's all up in the mentions. You're not going to be able to find like a picture online of a butthole See, like from the, that angle. The it's hottest definitely his. 18 year old out type shit. No, it's, no, it's no just, I think it's a dude. Yeah, it's a dude. I mean, it's Elon's Twitter. Elon's Twitter has become just like every day I go on. It's it's people arguing politics. It's some person in China getting hit by a bus. And then it's a bunch of people being like, I'm, I'll suck your dick. I'm the hottest girl on OnlyFans. And there's Butthole Barry. PFT posting someone's leg getting cut off. Yeah. No, that was a a bad, it was a bad parking accident. <laughs> that, was, yeah. that, was, I, so that was violent. It was bad. Uh, I was talking. I watched to, someone get shot today on Twitter. Like, yeah. You don't like see straight it. up shot. And I was like, what is going on right now? And these are all coming from Billy Football's account. <laughs> yeah. Also, they did the classic, which I'm happy I kind of held off on uh, getting the verified thing where everyone's first paycheck from tweets was like so high and yeah. now no one it's it's nothing i'm I think, still getting paid yeah but I got, not I got like not when you got ago. paid the first time. no yeah no, they, they honey potted us they yeah. honey potted us yeah so so elon was like i'm gonna it's basically whatever he feels on that day he's like here's the money that's going to the content pool and then the rest of it i'm just going to keep for myself um i was talking to kate the other day uh by the way congratulations 
congratulations to Kate. Had her beef, baby. Yep. And the beef, Pat. They had their baby. Good What's job. Butch, Name, Butch Cassidy. No, not, not Buckshot. No, it's Buckshot. Buckshot Cassidy. Buckshot yeah. Alpha Force Cassidy. Not is the, the official actual name. name. No, it is. That's the real name. <laughs> The real name actually rocks. Um, it does, yeah. But so, so Kate, Buckshot. Kate, Buckshot, yeah. Kate apparently went to the liquor store the other day, and she was trying to find a special ingredient for a drink. So she was telling the guy at the liquor store, "Hey, this is what I'm looking for." And she was pulling up a picture on her phone, scrolling through, and she showed him a picture of Butthole Berry by mistake. Yes, Butthole Berry's butthole. Yes. And the guy was like, "What?" And she was like, "I swear to God, that's not my butthole." But he totally thought it was her butthole. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, Butthole Berry's a menace. Menace. Uh, Memes is a menace. Memes just sends a video of a soccer player sliding. Oh, into a Memes! Guy's what the fuck? It says this post has been deleted. Memes just sent us a, a tweet <laughs> on the group chat of a dude just sliding down. It, it, it was Northwestern. He sent us Northwestern's locker. It was, <laughs> it was a soccer team. You fucking it asshole. It was trending this weekend. But. And Ravel's okay with that stuff. <laughs> uh, okay, your hot seat, Cool Throne. Uh, my hot seat is bet payoff season. So okay. somebody reminded me yesterday on Twitter that I've got a lot of bets to repay. Maybe I haven't done a great job communicating them on uh, when I'm going to be repaying the bets because I've, I've hit a cold streak recently. Uh, but we will be doing the baseball challenge tomorrow. Well, that was my hot seat oh. so, because we initially were saying the second place team had to catch. And then I was like, well, it'd be funnier for content if PFT's pitching and I'm catching that don't make a joke about our relationship. I wasn't going to. Uh so I'm catching, and I'm I'm gonna get injured. Yeah, I'm gonna get injured. My, We're both gonna get injured. So right now, my my right shoulder is hanging on by a thread. I've got a labrum tear, a You've rotator heard of an cuff. Accident? No, no, it's been it's been injured since like 2011, 2012. I've got a, a broken humerus at the top. I've got a fucked up shoulder. So uh, not looking forward to this bet. Probably gonna re-injure it. Um, but can you still throw a curve? I can throw a nasty knuckle curve. We got. I got to paint my fingernails for you. Yeah, please do tomorrow. So we're doing that. It's also going to be like freezing. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be sunny though. It's going to be sunny. Oh, good, great. Thirties yeah. and sunny. Also, and J Jake, Hank, and Max are going to be in the outfit. Yeah, we're ready. I'm ready for this. I'm going to get hurt. Yeah, we're both going to be hurt. This might be the end of part of my take. Actually, yeah. there's no episode on Friday. Sorry, but we got we got we got hurt. We got dead. Yeah, we got hurt. We died. Uh, I'm worried. I just don't know if I can like. Squat down catcher stance for like multiple innings if PFT can't get anyone out. You can. I'm going to get everybody out. You can. You can sit down like we need like some easy. Stuff. We're going to help you guys out. Just need, you think so? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm you ready. think you're, you think you're going to be good out there? You're playing left. All right, fine. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I would say center. it's it's. <laughs> there's probably the best odds are. Ending because of injury. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I'd, agree. I'd say I'd ending agree. for injury minus one eighty. Yeah. And and, I mean, how many times do you think they'll bat around the order? I guess that would be the other. Yeah. What's over -under. the over under of runs? Because we will have the team. We're they, playing they're playing the infield. infield. Yeah. So if you can just and it's cold. Yeah. Not great hitting conditions. But you're going to be pitching like meatballs. The, it, the only thing that you might have in your favor is that you're pitching so slow that it's going to throw them off, oh. and they just hit. Hard ground balls and and they make good plays. How fast do you think I can throw? Sixty. Yeah. How many errors? On the <laughs> yeah, also. I was gonna say sixty three. Sixty. How many errors? A lot. I yeah. like. I we're not. Yeah, I don't know why Jake is confident. Yeah, like we are going to. Be, I mean, I'm gonna misjudge some balls, but I can You're also misjudge all of them. Yeah, balls. but that's. Oh, but I'm, if just you gonna, miss, I'm just gonna play at the wall. And if come you in. misjudge yeah, exactly. some balls, we're like we have to get six outs. We'll get them. Okay. I think there's going to be a lot of, uh, yeah, not necessarily errors in the outfield because an error would imply that you had to get your, your glove, glove on the ball. On it, yeah. You're just going to not know how to track a ball. Yeah. And yeah, anything anything in the middle, like right what center, left center. What if I throw someone center. out? Yeah, you should. I should. We I'm, should let them steal. I'll throw someone out. I got to work my on my pop. Yeah, right. Your pickoff move. I'm going to work on hidden ball trick. Yeah. Before we play. Oh, fuck yes. We should get them. Let's Actually, ball trick. can we just get multiple balls? I mean, I'm rooting for you because I know plate? I'm going to be cold. I didn't even think about a play at the plate. Well, well the over. new rule is they can't touch you or else they're out. I might just I might just reverse it and just, like, not even try to catch the ball, just run at the guy running at me. I like that. No offense, Big Cat, but maybe he gets out of the base path. If you get Buster Posey on a play, I'm just going to walk over and put oh, you down man. like a horse. That would suck. And Jerry's going to be the ump, which will help us. Yes. Yeah. I got all zone. the – I bought so much ump shit. He's, he's going to look very official. 
Um, so yeah, that's going down tomorrow. I, I'm not super excited about it, if I'm being totally honest. Um, but no. you know what? Fuck it. Let's yeah, just go out there and be like It's legends. for the people. It's for the people. And um, then I'm going to be getting the perm and getting the tattoo on the live stream on Hank and Max's live stream. So all these bets will be paid off, but they will be paid off in the name of content. Yeah, we basically we have to do the, the 24-hour streams also. Punishment me and Max have had to do but that we've pushed off until we're able to use the full office facilities. And I've been just trying to shoehorn Everyone else everything everything into, into that because yeah. I don't know what the fuck we're gonna do for twenty four hours. So you guys are that will come bef- before soon. the new year. Yeah, I think soon. soon. Yeah. yeah, soon. Soon. How soon? Soon. Like two weeks. I think we. I think, think before we figured, Black Friday. Well, and I also think we figured out there's like a really good Thursday night football game that we want you guys to miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like we we're gonna do it, and it will end right as the. Thursday night football. Well, how can oh Bengals Ravens? Yes, yeah, so we wanted yeah, you guys. Ravens. We wanted you to be delirious <laughs> while we recorded the show right after. Bengals that. Ravens. You guys come out and the game's over, and then we do the show. And then I have to fucking edit. Yeah, like, that's the like, can't that's do that. Bullshit. You can't do that. You Sorry, you have to do, do your job. But this is my, like the whole thing is my job. Okay, right. so Max, maybe you don't have to edit, but Hank definitely has to be involved in content on the show. I want delirious, very tired Hank. I want yawns. I want everything. Where oh, yeah. are we going to be? Yawns are going to be so bad. Where are you going to what? Where are we going to be locked in? We're going to build a box. We're going to build a box. A, box? a boo box. Yeah. How big is this box? Big. big. We have a we have a huge basketball court. Although too. we do have some okay. empty rooms okay. we could do. Yeah. We should maybe do that. We just put you in an empty room. There's some small empty rooms. Are you going to give us some, like, toys? Oh, if we just, yeah, if we just. You got to get, like, a puzzle. If we just put something over the glass uh, doors in one of the conference rooms, we could do that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one of the podcast rooms probably No, that's not too small. That's That's not too small. That's not too small. There's the big conference room. No, that's too big. Okay. That's way too big. That's that's also too small. That's way too big. It That's should a big be like room. this studio. No, this studio is too big. Me and Max are gonna do like popcorn reading. Oh, okay. But I think, well, we can we can talk about we it another time. What's right, popcorn which... reading? School. I don't know what how that do is. Even, how do you even popcorn reading? I know what popcorn work? reading is. You when just... you're reading and then all, all of a sudden you call a person's name, popcorn PFT. And you yeah. Pick up, oh yeah. yeah, and yeah. Then you There's catch the only person. the two of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that was gonna be my thing. But then you catch the person who's not paying attention. It's basically you're just trying to rat them out to the teacher. But there's only two of you. Yeah. Hank's just gonna be saying popcorn max, max. the entire time. Yeah. Yeah, be I sick. can read better than him. All right. Yeah. Uh, exactly. What's your cool throne? So um, maybe we can take this out if we're not ready to say it on the show yet. But I think that this person's going to be on the live stream on Thursday. Yes. Clinton Portis. The, the, the other person. <laughs> yes. So everybody be cool. I'm trusting the listeners this to be cool. This is dumb. No, but we listen, have to say no, it. no, no, because it, you, everyone's got to wear like nice clothes. Yeah. Thursday night when you're watching the stream. We have to say it because we're, you know. Brush your hair. You're going to be shocked. Take a shower. We have a very special guest that's going to watch football with us, going to sit down for an interview on part of my take on Thursday in studio. As well as Clinton Portis. As well as Clinton Portis, <laughs> who I'm also very excited about. Um, it is Tiffany Gomez. Mm-hmm. The That motherfucker's not real lady from the plane. I remember but from she's her so, feet but, picture but she's, in her kitchen. But she's so much more than that. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to start out by remembering that, everybody. Um, she's a nice lady. She's flying up to Chicago. Uh, not on American. That was specified. And uh, she's going to be doing an interview and and live streaming the game. So everybody be cool. Just be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool, guys. We're all cool guys, right? Be cool. We're cool. Be cool, Hank. Hank, are you be cool? Um, yeah. All right. We're going to be cool. We're going to be cool. All right. Uh, my cool throne. So my hot seat is uh, having to catch tomorrow for PFT, although we're going to fucking be... We're gonna we're gonna crush that. I need uh, some uh, some red man. Can we get some red man? Yes, I need attack. a bunch of red. Man. I got spider attack. Uh, my cool throne is charity. So I tweeted about this the other day, but uh, Weishfest that is going to be in Chicago Salt Shed on Saturday. These are people I've been uh, you know known for a very long time. Great charity. They raise money for families battling cancer. So if you're in Chicago and you want to do something on Saturday. It's going to be sick. Natasha Bedingfield is playing. Oh, yeah. very cool. Uh, mm-hmm. Randy Hauser, Plain White Tees. Uh, so concert, college football will be on all day. It's going to be a great party. 150 bucks is open bar basically all day. So it's going to be a great time. I think there'll be some people from Barstool there. So please go check it out. It is W-E-I-S-H-Fest.com. Um, help out. Yeah. Help out. It's They're great, great people that I've known for a very long time. So help out. Great lineup. Yes. Great lineup. And you get to watch college football with an open bar at the Salt Shed, which is a Awesome venue. Perfect. Uh, hot seat, cool throne, Jake. My hot seat is Dabo Swinney. 
Yeah. Yes. He had a radio show where he had some words for Tyler from Spartansburg. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's four and four this season. He told him he's part of the problem. If you want to apply for my job, go for it and good luck to you. It was a five minute rant. Uh, you can listen to it. It's all over. He also dropped a great, he went, Tyler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is just a very, like, that's a great dad thing to do. He also said, to answer your question, I started as the lowest paid coach in this business. I worked my ass off. I'm not going to let this smart ass kid get on the phone and tell me how to do my job. I work for the board of trust. He, he basically did the Dave Chappelle when keeping it real goes wrong. Yeah. I don't like people playing on my phone. Yeah. He, uh, but it is kind of crazy. Like Dabo Clemson was not a national title team. Dabo came. They won 10, more than 10 games, whatever, however many years in a row, seven years in a row, won two national titles. Bad year. I think he deserves at least one bad year. So Dabo is actually right with his answer, which was he raised the expectation right. so high that now you can't, it's impossible to fulfill your expectation right. unless you win a national championship. Right. So Dabo's right in that, but it's also, it's very funny here. Dabo Swinney say the word ass. Yes. Yes. That's uh, my take on it. All right. Your cool throne. My cool throne. Well, it's kind of putting you guys on the hot seat, but Cooper flag. He committed to Duke. Yeah, fuck mm-hmm. him. Yeah. He's dead Rat to me. Tank. He's dead to me. To Duke, the brotherhood. So Duke over UConn and we'll see him next year in Cameron indoor. You know what? Dead to me. I think, I think this is bigger than Duke. Dead I think it's me. bigger than Duke. I think I might still be a Cooper Flag guy. I'm not for the next year. I will be when he goes pro. I think I have to root for old Cooper. Yeah, okay. but Shire, he's a hometown guy here. I I don't Likeable. like Cooper Flag. I do not like Cooper Flag. All right. I'm done with Cooper Flag. He's going to be a problem. He's going to be a problem. Cooper Flag is going to be a so, problem. He is Congrats, very Hank. good. I, I'm not going to hate. I, I'll say it. I will not hate Cooper Flag. I'm just going to pretend he doesn't exist. You can do that for the next year. Yeah, I'm going to shun him. Can I'm you, shunned him. I'm shunning him. Can you root for the Brotherhood, no. but not root for Duke at the same time? No. No. All right, then I'm out. Also very funny. Like It was like Cooper Flag to the Brotherhood, and he's holding a pitchfork. The up. Trident. Yeah. yeah. The Brotherhood was yeah, the brotherhood. interesting choice there. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's get to our interview with that Ryan Whitney. Nothing. Let's get to our interview with Ryan Whitney. It is brought to you by our friends at Body Armor. Uh, shout out Body Armor. Body Armor helps us stay hydrated throughout our interviews with the biggest guests in the world, packed with electrolytes, no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes. Body Armor hydrates the best athletes in the world, and more importantly, us during interviews. Buy Body Armor today. Visit the Body Armor Amazon store retailers nationwide. Available in stores nationwide. Head on over to Body Armor store on Amazon and get yours today. Here he is, Ryan Whitney. Okay, we now welcome on uh, one of our favorite guests, I think he might lead the league in part of my take appearances, so we had to have him on in the new studio. Uh, and we have NHL hockey is back in what a week. So yeah, yeah, no, we got we got two weeks till opening night. Two weeks till opening night. Want to do our hockey preview? Uh, talk about the upcoming NHL season. I'll start with this. I I'm big on uh, the Golden Knights. I think they're going to be good this year. Yeah, Golden Knights. I don't really see any Stanley Cup hangover coming there for some reason. I talk to the guys. They're ready to go. Um, so I think that they're going to come out buzzing and, and honestly just start the season off just the way they finished last year. I also kind of like the Sharks this year. I feel like they're, they they did a good job in the offseason. I think the Sharks are really going to struggle to score goals. Um, it could be one of the worst teams we've ever seen in modern-day NHL. Ooh, um, no. We'll see how it plays out, though. You don't okay. know puck. You don't know puck. All right. So obviously this season started, uh, which is that this is how we do our previews. Um, so this is first, early actually. For this us, is early. Guy. This is early. But we also were like, hey, we we're opening a new studio. Wit is I I do think that you are the number one guest on this show. Um, so speaking of the new season, from a player's perspective, when does the new season feel like you're like really in it? When do when does like the panic of like we're really good or really bad? actually start because you know like baseball it's usually somewhere around july nfl it's right around now where teams trade deadline figuring out what they are what is it for hockey uh if i was a super informed guest and by the way what an honor i think we said it last time like number one sports podcast to be the most the guest that's on the most like that's kind of that'll go down on my resume when it's all said and done so thank you boys it is an honor yeah Yeah, you're you're right and you're welcome big time so how what percentage of pink whitney should we get then because you've Mm. done so much promotion on our show Uh, uh, talk to your boy dave because now he fucking owns everything so (laughs) ask him okay i'll buy it from you for a dollar do you just get a check every month every quarter 
Oh, that's sick. That is kind of nice. That's fucking sick. I right, drive. So, I drive past a pink Whitney billboard. I mean, there's both so many. Guys, when I go wait, to work. Both you guys are making way more than me. So if we want to do this talk, we could talk. Like, that's can probably you guys true. give me some no, money. No. He's right. We We're, actually. Yeah, we, let's drop it. We gave away our game checks for the next year. <laughs> uh, all right, wait. So back to the question: When does yes, the yes. NHL okay. season start? So for real. I wish I had the exact numbers, and if I was a uh, an informed guest, I would. But American Thanksgiving is the time. When you you know, and by that I mean I I pretty sure that if you're not in the playoffs come American Thanksgiving, you're like you got a ten percent chance of getting in. Like the numbers are crazy how it ends up working out. So while there's some panic um, for a team like myself, the Edmonton Oilers, I'm an Edmonton Oilers super fan, once an Oiler, always an Oiler. There's some worry, but it's not it's not too late as of right now, right? I think every team's played between seven and ten games. So obviously there's some sketchy starts out there for some what were thought to be really good teams. But once we get to American Thanksgiving, that's when you look at the standings and you can actually figure out like there might be one or two teams that aren't in right now that get in. But this will probably be the top eight in each conference. Wait, the Oilers stink. So we are now a new team. We won the outdoor. We won the Heritage Classic. We smacked around the Calgary Flames who suck. Wait, when was the Heritage Classic? Heritage Classic was Saturday night where the Edmonton, um, oh, my God. They did. What, Oilers? what is their name? What is the CFL team in Edmonton, Oilers. guys? Come on. Oh, the Eskimos? I think it is the Eskimos. Yes, I think it is. Um, they played outdoor at their stadium, 20th anniversary of the first outdoor game before the Buffalo-Pittsburgh one I played in was Edmonton versus Montreal in 20, 2003. They did the 20-year anniversary, did the Battle of Alberta. It was actually sick. Nickelback played. Nickelback oh, played, nice. guys. That is Very sick. Cool. Connor McDavid said they were the greatest band of all time. Okay. So you got to respect when the great one says that or, you know. You the can't great call it the one. great one. I, I didn't mean that. The no, great, you the said great. that you You're not even in the playoffs right now. You just said the great one. In fact, on October. Well, he got hurt, Big Cat. We missed. We, we, he was out for two games, and, and we lost both. And then he came back and he was dominating the other night. So basically, that win changed around the whole season. But as of right now, the Edmonton start's been a disaster. I could say that. Yeah, you said the Oilers suck. You tweeted that out. I know, but then I retracted it and I said I had a moment of weakness and I said I took That's it all fair. back and that That's they're fair. actually awesome if the Flames really suck. Oh. So I, I addressed that on today's uh, episode of Spit and Chickens or yesterday because this is dropping tomorrow. Yesterday's episode of Spit and Chickens, I addressed that tweet and I really re- I retracted it. Okay, so, all right, so I can't believe they're doing... Do you think they do too many outdoor games? No, I actually don't. I think that people that watch on TV have a right to probably be like, why are there so many of these? But they're totally made for everyone going. Yeah. And every person that goes to the one each year is goes away pretty much saying it was a blast. It's an awesome experience. There's tailgating, you know, just being outside. So it's not... I mean, for the viewers, it's, it's usually January 1st or January 2nd. They finally switched it from when the college playoff is or that's december 31st right either way it's a good thing it's it's on tv and then being there is the best part so i like how they do that's it. a good yeah. answer there was also a guy that was in the pregame skate he was wearing like cowboy boot skates that rocked i saw that guy i don't know who he was uh, but he had legit like bower bottoms on cowboy boots. yeah so i don't know how the balance that, that would be like my ankles when i was playing he was doing the uh the canadian tuxedo i think he had jeans a jean jacket and cowboy boots on he looked awesome that's biz. That's pretty much how biz dresses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I like this answer. Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving is when yep. teams start to feel the pressure. Uh, how is it in a locker room, though, at the beginning of the season, if you do start like the Edmonton Oilers, is there like, hey, guys, what's going on? Maybe not so many jokes. Like, let's get let's rip off some wins here. We, we got to yeah. start. We got to start making some hay. I think the the panic can set in for the players a little bit in a sense of like if we had good or high expectations and we're struggling the way Edmonton was, they that's why they were like they were talking about this outdoor heritage classic as if it were a playoff game. Like I think I heard must win thrown around a couple times and considering it was the eighth game of the year, that's not ideal. But players realize like we gotta start getting going. Whereas if you're on the Sharks or, you know, the Blackhawks, there's no expectations. Obviously, you want to play well, but you realize that the whole year was probably going to be a bit of a grind. So for the good teams who struggle slow, yeah, right away, you're like, we have to switch this. We have to change this. And then if you're in Canada or a big market, the questions are starting to come after every practice, every game. You want to end those. You want to get away from that. So it's probably quicker for the players. But like fan bases don't really panic until mid-November, late November. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it felt like a, a very slow start for Edmonton. And on the other hand, you got Boston. Boston's been 
the it's best crazy. team in the NHL. How did this team lose in the playoffs, Whitney? They just ran into a super hot goalie. They didn't get great goaltending. They didn't switch up their goalie, which they had all regular season. They had gone the swayman Allmark combo. They went with Allmark every game until the end, and then Swayman went in, and it was just – it was one of those just wasn't meant to be. And, and, and Bergeron came back in the middle of the series. They were up 3-1. He comes back. They lose the next three. It was basically a full-on collapse and a choke. Like, I said it at the time, and Florida had this magical, like, thing going on where who knows what they would have done with Vegas. They were so banged up. Everyone was injured. Kachuk could barely even move. But Florida was a good team, and they basically just – they, they caught lightning in a bottle, if that's the saying. I don't even know if that is. But it was it was a shocker to me. It still will be. But what they've done to start the season is incredible because they, lo- they lose Bergeron, they lose Krejci, and everyone's like, this team's going to struggle to make the playoffs. I had them getting in, but I thought they may be the eighth, seventh seed. And it looks like the culture there. Marshawn's the new captain. They still have McAvoy, even though he's getting suspended today. For they what? Still have yeah, the saucy. He put a little shoulder sussies. into him. He oh. just crushed Oliver Ekman Larson in the face with his shoulder. So he'll probably get three games, what's, I'd say. What's that like when you have the meeting? When, when you go to the player safety meeting, you get to plead your case to not get saucy. What do you say? So I only um, – I had one phone call hearing. I went to lift up Ovechkin's stick, and I speared him in the balls. It's dirty. And, um, and, and actually, the, the guy I was on the phone was, hey, you got the right guy. I always thought that was kind of crazy, and I got fined 2500 bucks. So I never was suspended in my NHL career. Oh, wow. That means you didn't play tough enough. Exactly. Yeah. I knew you were going to say yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, well, that is. Like, I want my guys to get suspended every now and then. Okay, well, I mean, in the end, like, you lose, as a fan, you lose one of your players for games, and then the player loses money. So suspensions aren't ideal, but I will say it means you're teetering on the edge of being a little crazy. Right. I think Biz got a 10-gamer, actually, for jumping off the bench during a fight, so he's probably (laughs) still bitching about that money lost. (laughs) Yeah, he could not lose that money. That's very NBA of you to care more about your money than actually helping your team win there, Ryan. Well, actually, the first thing I said was that the fan base would understand that a player is now gone. So that was the first thing that went into my my mind and then i thought the player also loses money but the first thing i said was not being <laughs> in the, the kids lineup. yeah, yeah. So that's the not kids. nba yeah you don't you not guys, nba you don't do load management you know that kids come out every night to see ryan whitney play when you're on a road trip and you i know, heard jimmy you know butler from. got a load management game in the third game of the fucking season so <laughs> no what okay so speaking of nba is there a james harden of uh the nhl in that maybe a guy no. a star who oh. might who might ask for a trade so Pierre-Luc Dubois was on Columbus. Tortorella and him butted heads. He didn't want to be there. He requested a trade. He got traded to Winnipeg, where I believe his family lived. And, you know, Canada, big market, good player. And then all of a sudden, a year went by, and he wanted to get traded from there, and he got traded to L.A. So he's on his third team after two trade requests. So one more, and he'd match uh, big, big game James. Yeah. Hmm. Big game, James. Big game, James. I like that. That's James Shields, who did not deserve that nickname. You guys no, got that, yeah. You guys have become like the big Jays of the hockey world. It's been it's been fun to watch the last couple of years. You had you broke the story about Babcock looking through people's cell phones. You said that you come down with the side of the players always. I think Biz said like if you fuck with the players, what do you say like no spit, no lube, sandpaper finish. Yeah, That's I think he said, get. well, Ben Jover, no spit, no <laughs> lube, sandpaper. Probably a little aggressive. I mean, he does work for TNT, but he's. He can say and do whatever he wants. We figured that out at this point. Yes. Do you guys do you guys feel like more journalistic now? Is this a serious podcast? No, Chicklets? no, 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 no. We never want to be journalists. And looking back, I mean, Biz had texted me, dude, I guess Babs is looking through guys phones again or something. I was like, no way. And then I kind of reminded him of our phone call when we recorded. It was our first episode off of our summer break. Long deserved break that we really, yep. really deserved yep. and needed. So Hank just put in a trade you request to spit in Chicklets. <laughs> thank you. So then uh, we just he just threw it out there and he was just like, you won't believe this Babcock. He's checking guys phones. And then honestly, like he said after, he's like, that'll probably catch a little bit of steam in the media. But never in a million years did I think that would end up happening. So in terms of like that type of podcast, breaking news, guys getting fired, like I don't. I'm not looking to be a journalist. You guys know that. You guys don't want to be journalists. I don't want to be the guy breaking the news. I want to be the guy that's maybe talking about the news that's being broken. Right? Yes. So so when that all went down, were you were you kind of stunned with the response? Because I was getting mad for you guys. You, we, we kept on defending you guys because it's like – all these uh, journalists were like, "Oh, why would you? Why would you believe these pieces of shit?" Parsed to all this stuff. It's like, no, they're talking about a, a thing that happened to the players. 
they're reporting what actually happened. Were you at any point like, this is insane that people just, even after all this time, think that we're complete jokes and like, why wouldn't you believe us? Yeah, a little bit. I, I will say there was a little panic, um, at least for myself, when they released the quick statement where uh, Boone Jenner and Johnny Goudreau said that he did go through his phone and it was completely fine and nothing was weird. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, right. we're, we could end up looking like fools. And I knew that we hadn't made anything up, which that was my big argument at the time. I said, like, wh why would why would we as a podcast risk like pretty much everything to make up this random story. And then even for biz, like who did probably catch a little heat. I think TNT texted him right away, probably with the league texting them or getting in touch with them. Like what is going on? So biz has biz is. You think he's going to risk like his job with TNT and chicklets and all of kind of what we stand for and what we say being truthful for to just make up this random lie. And I think part of it was just all the barstool haters and just us being attached to them. And you know, hockey media, they're out of their mind. A lot of them. So mm -hmm. I think for that, it was a little bit surprising in terms of like people saying we're flat out lying. Like, why would we do that? But when that statement came out from, from the, the older vets and the captain on the team, I said, Oh shit. Like if, if they just sweep this under the rug, we're going to have to stand by our word, but it's always going to be a little foolish looking for, for us as a group. And then in the end, those older guys hadn't even heard what he'd done to some younger players. And, and the truth ended up coming out kind of luckily for the team in terms of probably getting a coach uh, out of there that wouldn't have been much fun to play for. And, and in terms for us as a podcast, you know, holding some credibility it, still. It, it's crazy to me. I don't know if you get mad about it because obviously we're not uh, professional athletes or ex-professional athletes. So when people say shit about us, we're like, yeah, we are dumb. We're dumb idiots. Like, what are you going to do? We're not going to fight it. But when journalists say, like, what do these guys know? And Are you sitting there like, dude, I know that I'm not a journalist, but I was in a fucking NHL locker room for a decade. Like, I know something. This is crazy. I, I, just more, I more look at it like I have a lot of friends that still play in the league. Like right. I, I've, I've been out of the league for quite a while coming up 10 years, but I still know guys who are still there and playing. And obviously that'll change at some point, but biz even more so. I mean, he's got so many friends around the league. He's got so many different sources within teams. And so for people to say that we have no clue what we're talking about, I know uh, I'm not going to say they're like jealous, but they're more just kind of being a little ridiculous in, in my mind. But I I also will say, like, I look at it the same way. Like, I, I am pretty dumb. I don't know. I just give my opinion on sports. And if there's a certain play I'm talking about, I'd like to think I know what I'm saying in terms of, like, a breakdown. But when we're talking about different stories that break, like, yeah, we're, we're, we're dummies. We're messing around. We're just being goofballs. So that part of it doesn't bother me. It's more when you kind of question our credibility. And if, 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 if you're thinking that we would make things up about certain players, like, not only would that hurt us, but... It would it would just kind of ruin our relationships within the league, right? Yeah, I thought Ra's credibility was on the line, so I was happy to see that come through. I was worried for him. I was like, "What what hot water did did uh, Wit and Biz get Ra into this time? How's he going to get out of this one?" Ra's just immediately like getting away from Biz and I was like, "No, no, no, these guys are full of shit." Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you said Babcock, obviously tough guy, not fun guy to play for. I think Tortorella's everyone knows probably not fun to play for who's another coach that but not, I don't want to comp I never yeah, want yeah. to have those two be compared I right. do like saying that right and we said it at the time because ba uh Tortorella can be hard on guys and like demand a lot but people also say that away from the rink he's he's a good guy he's a good person they he could just him, be a yeah. motherfucker to play for where Babcock never had any of that right right so, so who else is like a tough guy to play for that like around the league not not a bad coach but just he just coaches the guys very tough. Dude, the game has changed so much where when I was playing, I would say it was like 80% of guys who could be ball busters and stay on you and be pricks. And it's just, I think with the, with the way the game's changed and players being so young in the league, it, there aren't many guys. I think Greg Cronin, who's a first year coach on Anaheim, uh, he's been around the NHL and all, all hockey leagues for forever, but he can be pretty intense from what I've heard. But, like, you look at Tampa Bay, John Cooper's not really like that. Like, he's he's just more probably not down to earth, but maybe more a little more personable with all the guys he coaches. And, you, like, Martin St. Louis in, in Montreal now, it's Jim Montgomery's a, kind of a player's coach in quotation. So it, it, the game's changed in terms of the hard-ass old-school coaching style is, is really going by the wayside, and it's happened pretty quickly, actually. I have a dumb question. 
uh, if you rank the four major sports, where does hockey rank in terms of how important the coach is? So football's one. Yeah, football I think is definitely basketball one. is the last one. Okay, mm. Just and I would say baseball. I would say baseball is in front of hockey, so third. Okay, you think baseball? Because baseball aren't baseball coaches calling all the pitches and stuff, and a lot no, of it. Well, catchers, some, a lot of catchers do that too, and some of Even it just is deciding pitchers though. Is, yeah, deciding pitchers when to pull guys, but there's also like there, there's been the analytics revolution in baseball where like the Yankees. I think that's a big complaint Yankees fans have is like Aaron Boone doesn't even manage; it's like a spreadsheet. Like it's just a plan that they they could, have going in. You could have a where software like a computer program. could do it. Yeah, yeah a computer a so- could do it. AI could could manage. The so Yankees let's put hockey. Let's put well. hockey number two be- behind football. What's then? the hardest thing a hockey coach has to do? Like, is it tactical? Um, no, I think like there's so few systems you can actually play. Like there's there's only so many defensive zone coverages. There's only so many different power plays you can run. So coaches actually more so like picking the lines, right? Like who's going to play with who? Yep finding out uh, like if you ask players like especially forwards it'll drive them nuts when the coaches are putting the lines in a blender where every game you're playing with two different guys and guys like getting consistency and having a chance to play with the same two players or for defenseman your other partner but I I think coaches are picking the lineup they're figuring out mid-game who's going and who's not and then shortening the bench maybe hopping a guy up from the fourth line to the second line because he's really going that night so in game Coaches do a, do a lot more than I think. Um, and there's a lot of preparation that goes in and a lot of video watching and scouting other teams. But in game, coaches are getting a feel of the bench and seeing who has it that night and who doesn't. So, yeah, they're number two. I think number two. I, I sure. also do love in, a, in, in the Stanley Cup playoff when uh, the coach, like, will – they have, like, one line that they can put out there that could kill everyone, but they don't want to do it until later on in the series. I love when coaches do that, when they're like, all right, here is – like f- fuck our third and fourth line. We're gonna we're gonna shorten this up and just like hammer you with our first line. But then you look at Vegas, and that's why they were just so dominant and continue to be this year. They have twelve forwards and six D, and there's no weaknesses. You don't have to hide a, a D pairing. You don't have to really limit the fourth line. They pretty much just roll their lines, roll the pairings, and they're so deep that they just crush teams. So that job may be a little easier in terms of like Bruce Cassidy because he knows. I got depth at every position. Like I, I, I really don't have to hide anyone, and I can just chug this train along and just wear teams down. Yeah. Was, it, was there ever a, a defenseman that you would play with who was a really good player, but for whatever reason, you and him just you couldn't play well together on the ice? Uh, I don't have an example of that personally off the top of my head, but it happens all the time. I mean, I don't know how much time. Now, granted, they're both centers. Like, Crosby and Malkin didn't spend much time together. Obviously, they play the same position, so that makes a little bit of sense. But there's been there's been like times where two good players, a center and a winger, for some reason they 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 don't click, and there's two D partners that don't click. And then you see maybe a D pair that you'd never thought would work, and they end up playing together an entire season. So yeah, there is chemistry within players that for some reason sometimes never forms, and it's always kind of confusing because I think coaching staffs look before a season like, all right, these two be great together, and then it never works out. It's kind of one of those things that's just so random you can't put a finger on it unless it's a group, a forward line where, you know, you got two guys who love to go in, get the puck, they'll go in the corners hard, then there's one guy who doesn't do it so they don't all mesh well together. But for personally, I don't, I don't remember having that. Is your D-pairing partner, is your partner on defense, is it like, um, like, you know, like a cop pairing where it's like you have his back no matter what and you almost are like closer to him than anyone else on the team? Yes, Yes, That's and every cool. shift you're coming off, you're just talking next to each other on the bench. What just happened in that in that corner? I should have been there. Oh, I yelled this. I got to say this. So there's just so much that goes into it during practices and in between shifts that that if you can get a a, a player, a partner for D that you're with for a long time, you really start knowing where each other are without even really thinking, which is the the the, the true, you know, that's ideal in the game, right? If all of a sudden I know he's going to be there then it just makes the game that much easier. So, yeah, there's there's a lot that goes into that. Will, will a coach ever be lazy and be like, you guys both speak Russian. You guys should be on the ice at the same time. Yes. That's what I would do, yeah. But that would more be like them being like, hey, we both speak Russian. Put us together. But yeah. then the other, the third player on that line's like, uh... <laughs> right. They're, they're, they're looking at me with anger and talking in Russian, so I don't think they like me very much right now. You better learn to speak Russian, buddy. I actually have a <laughs> serious question about, the, uh, about uh, Russia and the Russian gas that you guys uh, would always talk about on, on Spin Chicklets. 
Um, since the war in Ukraine, has there been a shortage of Russian gas coming over to the, over to the United States? I don't think it ever was coming over to the United States. The, the Russian gas experience, it, it's only in the KHL. you got to play in the KHL to experience it and get the chance. And actually, not to plug our own show, but we dropped plug the away. show today or yesterday, and Kevin Dahlman is a guest. He played in the NHL for a little bit. Then he went over to the KHL. He's actually the all-time goal-scoring leader in that league. He's from Canada. He had an incredible career over there. He probably made $30 million. And he goes in depth more than we've ever discussed with anyone what actually Russian gas is. It was about 10 minutes of him describing what he did, how he did it, how he felt. And it's a great little story and an in-depth look at Russian gas. So anyone who's really curious, go to the Kevin Dahlman interview on this week's Spit and Chicklets. I love I'm gonna that. listen to it. That's great. After I listen yeah, to please, part of my take. PFT. I was actually I was over there. And my gas was like, I got a shot and it was definitely like speed or something because I was incredible that night. And when I did it, uh, but this guy, he actually went through like using the gas mask and I was blown away. And then he gave it to another guy who was like, holy shit, that what a buzz. Like it, it's, it's a it's a pretty incre incredible like breakdown of what they actually did over there. Yeah. Has there been a difference in uh, just international hockey in general, like the flow of where players are going to play ever since the KHL is now not a safe place for people to play? It, it, there's there's guys still in the KHL um, that's still going on. I think that maybe guys look to Sweden and Switzerland a little bit more. But what sucks for international hockey is like the World Juniors, which is the best under 20 players in the world. A lot of guys go on to be NHL stars every Christmas time. Russia's not in that. They're not in the under 18. If this continues and they have a best on best tournament, they wouldn't be in that. So the IIHF has has banned them from everything, which sucks because, you know, they're always one of the best teams and you want to see these players. And it just it is what it is. I don't, I don't see that ending anytime soon. Yeah. Um, real quick, Connor Bedard, nine games in, <clears throat> passed the test. Although on yet last night, so Monday night. He scored with 30, 30 seconds into the game. The Blackhawks did lose 8-1. to one. That wasn't ideal. But has he passed the Ryan Whitney eye test? Uh, after the first period of opening night, he passed the test. And I said, holy shit. Like, I just wanted to see him in one game. And I actually knew that I'd probably have a – I mean, that's a little ridiculous to say. But I, 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 once I saw him for a period, you can kind of tell. And right away, you're like, this, this is a superstar. This is a future – game breaker and he's small but his shot is is out of this world and i also thought or i also didn't realize how good he is at creating plays like space for himself he had a nice assist in the first game and he does everything that you need to see a young like first overall pick do to prove to you that you're looking at a future 50 goal a year guy his shot is out of this world and and in terms of that loss monday night they had rookie party in scottsdale before that mm. so that game was a write-off anyway. okay so that doesn't count that doesn't count yeah, doesn't uh, count is he better than Connor mcdavid no same number stanley cups Connor mcdavid's true. team true. is also really bad no no the Oilers are not really bad they're very good they're they, very good they had a tough little start but they're very actually good. they're two and five they suck according to yeah, the hockey analyst five. ryan whitney they're two and five nope nope took it back don't put words in my mouth they're two don't and, put words in my mouth two and five and by the way the oilers have lost the last two seasons in the western conference final two years ago and the second round this year to the two stanley cup champions so basically they're runners up the okay past two years. yeah okay. nice so nice and 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 last year their series with Vegas, which was 2-2, going back to Vegas game five, they lost, and that was the Stanley Cup final. So I just want to so get ahead of that. So they lost in the Stanley they, Cup final. Run, yeah. They're runners up the last two years. Okay. Yeah. It's a good spin if, zone. If he retired today, who would, have, who would have had a better career, McDavid or Phil Kessel? I guess Phil Kessel, but yeah. McDavid was – was more dominant, but in, if you're looking at a career, I mean, he p broke the Ironman streak and has two Stanley Cups and, I don't mm -hmm. know, four or 500 goals, so Kessel. Does he is have Kessel still playing? Does he have three? No, he um, – last year he was on the, the Vegas Golden Knights, but he didn't play one playoff game. They went with a different roster, and then this year I think he was open to playing, but he didn't want to go somewhere on a tryout. So who knows? Maybe he does get signed in the next month or two, or maybe he's, he's just going to shut it down. But I he hope, was – I, hope I he mean, to playing. have the record he has – and to do what he did, he's an all-time player, Hall of Famer. Hey, Prime members. Did you know that you could be listening to this podcast episode and all of Barstool Sports podcasts on Amazon Music ad-free, simply included with your Prime membership? All Amazon Prime members also get access to the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts. Enjoy shows like Part of My Take, Spit and Chicklets, and many more. To start listening, download the Amazon Music app 
or visit amazon.com slash barstool23. That's amazon.com slash barstool23. We're going to get back to Ryan Whitney in a second. Before we do, he's brought to you by Pepperoni. Pepperoni is Blake's favorite snack in the entire world. He gets amped up. He watches college football. He eats pepperoni next to his dad on the couch who's also snacking. It's a good bonding experience that we have. There is favorite snack on game days. There'll be your pup's favorite snack too. Pepperoni treats are incredible. Your dog will go nuts for them. Your dog's your BFF, right? Your pup is your BFF. Celebrate your favorite sports team with your BFF, your pup. Be your best friend's best friend with pepperoni treats. Go to pepperoni.com to find a bag near you. And now here's more Ryan Whitney. Hey, where's Patrick Kane going to play this year? Because he's got his hip injury that he's rehabbing from, and he's going to basically get to pick a team at some point yep. in, like, January, right? Yep. I wish I wish I was buddies with him and I could kind of get an inside scoop. I got nothing. I'm hoping for Buffalo. Uh, I'm on the Buffalo Sabres bandwagon. I'd love to see them get in the playoffs this year. It's been a tough – they actually have the longest playoff drought streak in pro sports right now. Really? Which is, which wow. is amazing to me. They haven't been in the playoffs in 13 years, which I was surprised. There's no team in any other league that's gone 13 years without the playoffs. Years. But it is the Buffalo Sabres. Patrick Kane's from Buffalo. I've actually been beating this drum since before he was traded to the Rangers. Rangers, Rangers are legit Stanley Cup, um, a Stanley Cup threat this season. Maybe he goes back there, but I don't know with how it went in the first round exit to the Devils. Uh, maybe Dallas. That's kind of a rumor that's been circulating around. That's another Stanley Cup possibility for that team. But I really can't give you any inside info. I'm not a journalist. That uh, They're tied with the Jets, the New York Jets. So this will be their 13th year if they don't do it. 12 oh, same years. as the Jets? Yeah, same as the Jets. Last time well, the Jets... I think the Jets might get in this year. Yeah, I think the Jets are good. Not to fact check you, but uh, Phil Kessel's a three-time Stanley Cup champion. Who? Three times. So you're, you don't know your You're 100% right. You're 100% 2020, right. He was 2020. on the Golden Knights, and I didn't give him credit because he didn't play in the playoffs, but that's my well, bad. Well, you don't so, say he didn't play in the playoffs. McDavid has uh, a long he way. He didn't play. It's a big yeah. mountain to climb. So I forgot. Still, his name's on the cup. Yeah, true. What? Uh, I just said I forgot. Okay, don't get mad, but you forgot. And they literally, when did they, they wanted a long time ago, though, right? This is like, it was, um, this is like yeah, marriage. Like six months when you ago. say oh, you're six sorry months, and then they keep months. giving it to you, I six said months I'm sorry. Ago. Actually, less yeah, than no, six you, months. Yeah, no, there's no way of getting out of that. You just got to no. say I'm sorry over and over, and then you just got to Mea break. culpa. Well, now, no, now I'm not sorry. I uh, am still. <laughs> um, Let's talk about a different sport real quick. Your Georgia okay. Bulldogs. Oh, baby. This Brock Bowers thing is scary as hell, though. Yeah. Because I don't Beck know. Carson Beck is good, though. Carson Beck is good. He might be I good. I know, and I didn't really know what to expect. He kind of, like, has a weird, like, face, like a little, like, lazy looking, but he can sling it. But they're they're not winning without Bowers, and I, I think that any true Bulldogs fan to tell you it's going to be real difficult without him. By the way, football guys, can he go first overall? Like, if he's no, going to be no. Gronk or Kelsey? No, no. He won't. Because he'll be a quarterback. But he'll go top five. Oh, that guy is like that guy's insane. Yeah. I can't believe how good he like I I think it could be he could be better than Kelsey and Gronk. Yeah. No, I mean you're right. Like he might he he will probably have a better career than the guys that get drafted above him, but that's what I'm saying with the NFL. Yeah. Like if you know you have this twelve to fifteen year superstar tight end and 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 he's not like he can block, he could do everything. Why wouldn't you take him? S consider especially considering these quarterbacks, half of them suck to get taken first overall. Yeah, the, yeah. Kyle Pitts was the highest uh, drafted tight end in NFL history with the fourth overall a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. What do you think so about? Maybe he breaks that this year. Yeah. What do you think, think about Caleb Williams painting his fingernails before games, saying like "fuck you" to his opponents? How does has there ever been a hockey player that does that? I don't know. I'd love to ask uh, Sean Avery. He might have painted the fingernails <laughs> yeah, at Sean times Avery, with definitely. like a giant "fuck you" to someone. I'm not exactly sure. I can't think of anyone. Um, What's Sean Avery doing these days besides getting in fights with people on the he's street? He's doing a hockey podcast with Kevin Conley, okay. um, E from Entourage, and then another guy, excuse me, I don't know his name. It's actually entertaining on YouTube. I watch it occasionally. And um, he does uh, jujitsu. I believe he's up to a blue or a yellow belt, and he competes, and he's done pretty well. So Avery's crushing it. I kind of like when Sean Avery just does the videos. I think he moved, but I, when he would just do he the videos. He lives in L.A. now. Yeah, he'd do the videos in New York where, like, people would, like, put their bike in front of, like, a coffee shop, and he'd just wait for the bike guy to come out, and he'd just yell at him. 
No, it was actually the opposite. He was a bike rider. Oh, he would attack right. people. That's right. He would really would go after people who maybe lanes. parked in the bike lane. Yes. Yeah, I love those videos too where it's like a GoPro on a guy's body and he's just like driving through New York screaming at people walking out yeah, of the bike was, lane. Yeah, that's I all, watched yeah. And, all and, and like I, every video I was just waiting for him to just dummy someone too. I was like, one of these is going to be incredible. He, had the he one, went out to LA. Yeah, he had the one in LA where he looked like the Terminator like, yeah. like walking down this car and he had like, I was like, holy fuck. And now he's like... He's a legit, like, killing machine considering he's a jiu-jitsu Jiu master. Yeah. So you don't want to fuck with those people. No, don't yeah. don't, don't speed around Sean Avery's neighborhood. That's just a nope. PSA to nope. everyone out there. But uh, nope. but back to, back to Brock. I think he's going to come back, right? He's not done for the season. They're not shutting him down. Uh, no, no they, they've said that he should be able to come back. But, like, you don't know after a surgery if, like, what, what will his percentage be? Like, will he maybe... Look at it and say, like, why am I coming back before the draft? I don't know. That there's just there's a lot of question marks, is all I meant. But the D is there. They're gonna get in the national title game, even if they lose the SEC title game, I believe. Mm -hmm. And and it's on to three in a row, guys. Three in a row. Already counting it. Would be pretty crazy. So yeah, so I, I think a lot of Georgia fans are like they're they're excited and they've got high expectations, but they also think, wait, this team isn't as good as last year's team. Or yeah. maybe the year before that team. But, but nobody's that good. Right, So it yeah. makes, it, makes Michigan, it a little easier, I oh, think. Oh, speaking of Michigan and their sign-stealing stuff, has anything like that ever happened in hockey? Do, was there ever, like, a time where, like, I think they're videotaping our practice or something? Would you no, even be able to that, get an advantage on that? Well, that's that's kind of what, what I agreed with what Deion Sanders was saying. Like, dude, you got our game plan. Stop it. And and I, I think that hockey probably maybe even more so than football. Like, you can know – in hockey, you do know exactly what every team's going to do, and it's just up to executing and, and, and somehow trying to stop what you know is coming at you. I mean, last year, people had clips of 82 games of the Oilers' power play that was the best power play in the history of the NHL, and nobody could stop it. So I think hockey well, wouldn't matter as much. the Knights did. I think the power play was still pretty money that season. <laughs> yeah, but they did win that series. They, they beat them, but I was saying <laughs> power play in film. So, so the Oilers, just so we can recap real quick, Runners up in the Stanley Cup playoff last year, and yep. if the Stanley Cup was given out to just the power play, they would have won it. Yes. Okay. McDavid's got like four cups, if that's the case. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's yeah. Let's just give him one, and now he's got the cup, <laughs> and we're good for everything. Oh, if he never wins one, you're gonna well, have to come man, on this show and apologize to us. You called him the uh, great one. The great one. The great one. I misspoke. I misspoke. I think I had Oilers great on my head that a number began with nine, but no, 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 no. Great one is Wayne Gretzky. But guys, speaking of no Stanley Cup, we had an all time first ballot NHL Hall of Famer retire, Joe Thornton. He never got the I cup. Mm -hmm. He never Big got it. And Biz and I said that Biz said if he had a magic coin that RA would probably try to eat. But if he had a magic <laughs> coin, um, and he could hand it to one player who never got the cup that that deserved one. His would have been Joe Thornton. Mine was Joe Thornton or Jerome Ginla. Two guys that you look back, both deserved it. Both went to cup finals. It didn't work out for him. But yeah, I mean, looking back, I mean, I'm sure Mc, McDavid's biggest nightmare is if it all ends and he doesn't have a cup. So yeah, yeah. that's why there's so much panic within Oilers Nation in the fact that Leon Draisaitl's next year is his last year of his deal. McDavid has two years after this, and then his deal's up. So if you see a failure this season, who knows what's going to happen Ooh, with Leon yeah. and committing to the future there. So there's some worry. I would yeah. give my magic coin to you. That's so nice of you, dude. Yeah. How, how so insufferable nice. would you be if you had won a cup? Probably pretty bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, like, just imagine like, you getting in an uh, argument with I won with the Biz. cup. Yeah, I'd be I like, won the yeah, cup. You don't know what you guys are talking about. I won the cup. I know hey, how many of you guys want a cup? Oh, nobody? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of wish you had a cup just to fucking stick it in everyone's face. Oh, I wish I did too, buddy. I appreciate that. Uh, I got a silver medal. That's my cup. That's yeah, a sad cup. That's a really sad <laughs> cup. If we, gave you, if we gave you the cup coin, <laughs> would you give it to Jumbo? I couldn't. I, I, I kind of... I think I gave it to a Ginla so that Biz gave it to Joe and I gave it to a Ginla. So I gave to, mine to, to you. To me, they're even. And, but that means you can't give yours to McDavid if he doesn't win a cup. Uh, I don't need to because he's still playing. Yeah, so but you just said he's got a two-year window. It was you for retired guys. Yours. You should save yours. PFT, yeah, no, I, just in case. I'm going to give it to Ovi so he can oh, have two. All right. Never mind. We don't have any Oh, they, they, 
they actually really had the the wit uh, reverse mush going on. I said the Capitals stink. They're old. They're slow. They suck. And they've won three in a row since I said that. So Thank things you. are looking up in Capitals land, but would I you, still don't think they're going to make the playoffs. But would you like to retract that? You just said that you retracted your Oilers take. No, I'm not retracting that one because they beat the Sharks, which doesn't count. Um, they beat somebody else shitty, and then they had one good win, I believe, against the Devils, maybe? But I still think yeah. the Capitals kind of suck. Well, they so might... I'll add a, I'll add a kind of on there. How about yeah, that? I think that's fair. They, they might kind of suck this year, and, and basically... It feels to me as a Caps fan like we're treating the next two years as the not OB. we're not trying to do a rebuild yet. We're like we're putting off the rebuild and just focusing the next year and a half, two years on getting OV to Gretzky's record. Is that fair? Yep, I I, I agree with that. Uh, Biz argued that against me. He he really likes their team, thinks they're going to get in the playoffs. Talks about all the champions in that locker room, which is a valid point. But Backstrom had this really difficult, crazy hip surgery to come back from and kind of hasn't looked the same since, since he came back from that. And, and I just think they're just older and slower, not a great D. Um, but I do agree with you. My point was I think it's all about the OV goal chase and then they kind of restart. Yeah, that's my personal Stanley Cup for the next two years, just counting down till OV gets I mean, there. that'll be one of the most amazing moments in NHL history, a record that many people said will never be sniffed, never yeah. even be remotely close to getting broken. And John Buchagross from ESPN was the first guy, I think six years ago, maybe long, maybe seven years ago, he sent out a tweet with a breakdown on how OV could do it. And I remember reading it like, there's just no chance, and somehow it's going to end up happening, and it'll be an ama- It'll be one of the coolest moments in, in the history of the sport. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. No, I agree. It's gonna. It's it gonna really be incredible. Be. Yeah. So I mean, he's been the most consistent guy ever. They've had how many years? He got in the league in what? Two thousand five. Two thousand. Yep. Yeah. Two thousand five, and they still haven't figured out how to stop him on the power play. How it's to like crazy. step into that office. And cut that you know shot what's down. nuts though, and I don't know if you guys caught this, but recently Austin Matthews scored his three hundredth. He scored his 300th um, in like six more games than it took Ovi. Ooh. So it's it's like, whoa. And and I think at the same age, if not younger. So like if Matthews continues and is able, it's all about staying healthy, which has been the incredible thing with Ovechkin is being that big and playing that physical that he's never really missed a ton of time where Matthews has battled injuries here or there. But he's an elite, he's a goal scorer like Ovi, so you never know. Mm. Yeah. Connor Bedard is probably going to break it. Not willing to say that yet. Okay. Can you talk me into nine games in? Pussy. Four goals. <laughs> if he had nine game, if he had nine goals in nine games, yeah, like yeah. Uh, Frank Petrano on Anaheim, I would say it. You said the first period you could tell with Bedard, right? Yeah. So yes. like first period, I retroactively I said this guy's going to break Ovi's record one day. You did? Yeah, mm-hmm. I did. Right you just now. Did. Okay. Oh yeah, because the season hasn't started. Right. Yeah, season started. This is about to start. It's about to start. I think he's as advertised. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So. Uh, Wit, I got one last question. It's always been great. Rowback question, rhoback.com, promo code TAKE. 20% off your first purchase, Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, everything. I wear Rowback all the time. It's the most comfortable clothes out there. Uh, who is your Stanley Cup final pick, and who do you have raising the cup? Uh, so I picked the Edmonton Oilers. Okay, that, um, they're two which, and five. Which actually, they're like, two and five. They suck. a lot of people picked. Well, the St. Louis Blues were in dead last place like January 4th. Well, you told us Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I picked the Edmonton Oilers. Um, the way the season starts, it's obviously not ideal. I think that if I were to give another pick, it's the Colorado Avalanche. Okay. They are just, they seem possessed. Although they had a tough little road trip here recently, but they're, they're an elite team with unreal depth, kind of like Vegas. Vegas could do it again. And then in the East, I actually think if Toronto... Or the Rangers won the cup. I wouldn't Whoa. be surprised. Hmm. Whoa! I know. So I know. I was going to say Toronto's very good. I, I want. I want to give you thirty seconds to talk us into the Toronto Maple, Le- Maple Leafs this year. Austin Matthews, uh, top five player in the league. Mitch Marner, an amazing playmaker. Obviously, an amazing talent as well. They got William Nylander, who's up for a contract and outstanding right now, leading his team in scoring. John Tavares is a veteran, can play that playoff style. They got a. A goaltender, Joseph Wall, who's kind of taken over the number one over Samsonov, and he looks amazing. He's His numbers in all his career NHL games, even though it's been short-lived, it, are, are, are pretty impressive. The defense is the one question, but they got Giordano, who's a former Norris Trophy winner. He's a leader. He's older, but he's smart, steady. Morgan Riley's a top-end talent. They got Klingberg, who's an offensive wizard to run the power play. 
They, they have Bertuzzi, who came over from Boston and Detroit the year prior, who's a playoff style in your face player. Max Domi's a pain in the ass. I think that they could do it. I would be surprised if they won the Stanley Cup, but I also think that if everything broke the correct way and they got really good goaltending, they could do it. Okay. okay. Well, um, Hank, do you have any questions for Wit? Oh, how how much FOMO did you have that you weren't in the Ryder Cup? That was that that was literally built for you. Yeah, I really wanted. But the only thing I don't appreciate, and it's it's I, I think it's you, it's Dave, it's Minahan, it's like. Everyone, oh, Whitney's not here. Whitney's not at uh, Big Brother at the office. Uh, I had the NHL draft and the award show mm. where we went and banked interviews and made mm. content that so you, you guys take decided the to off. plan yep. the Ryder Cup during. Oh. So nothing I could do there. Oh, and we got then, Hank here. Yeah, I do have Hank here, and he knows it. And and I told him, do it in the fall. And then oh, Big Brother at the season. office. No. Football season. No. Big Brother at... First, I thought I was going to be on vacation, and then I realized it's the draft and the awards, and I can't go to both. I have to go to my real job where I work 90 hours a week with spit and chicklets. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then Big Brother at the office, you guys plan that during Chicklets Cup, another just very smooth move by Barstool to not have me or Biz be able to be in Big Brother. Sounds so like you didn't squeeze out. I did not go Big to brother. because of my choice. I went to because of my my job and my profession and having to be present in that I, and those moments. Cause I heard there were meetings that took place where they said like months and months in advance, Hey, this is when we're going to do it. And that Ryan Whitney was like, yeah, I'm in, let's do it. Well, I, I didn't know when the draft and the awards was. Yeah. They don't put mm. that on a schedule. So if, if the draft, <laughs> and the awards weren't, then you would have been there. Yes. Not vacation. No, because then when I saw everyone going, I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. I'm going, I'll, I'll go. Hank, why are you giving that face, bro? <laughs> yeah. I would have. I'm not. I'm and not, I was I'm wrong not, about not, the vacation not, time. I'm not but trying my to... thing was, you should have had it in the fall. I understand, though, you had to get it out before the Ryder Cup, and it takes you guys like six months to edit stuff. So I understand completely. Max. And in the end, I promise I would have been there had it not been during a Chicklets work trip, capital W. Because the way Hank Capital asked that w. question made it seem like he had a gotcha moment there. Not a gotcha because moment. Because I, I told never, Hank I never, originally I was going to be on vacation on right. those dates. Yeah. Mm. Guys, you get one week vacation a, a year yeah. when you work this hard. I don't so take I thought, he's, yeah, he's I thought right. you said that you took you took the summer off. Uh oh. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. It was a long week. So one week vacation during the work. During it felt the work like a week. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you go? Nowhere. Golf. Just golfed. What, what was your What's in Nantucket for a couple weeks? Are you going to go into Dave's tunnel house that doesn't have tunnels? If I'm invited, I would like to go check that house out. And I do think there are tunnels there. I don't I think do that too. gets made up out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. He's just so dumb, he wouldn't even know. If, yeah. he, if he paid that much money and didn't have tunnels, he should get his money back. Because mm -hmm. that's a bad buy. Yeah, exactly. I feel like the price was set at that point because, because of the, of the tunnels. tunnels. That's a yeah, tunnel house. A, tunnels are worth at least $20 million. Easy. You know for a fact that he heard the, the, the news break of tunnels in the house and he probably called the real estate agent like, there's tunnels? Like, he, he had no clue going in, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah. And then he says there isn't any, so I guess he's been told no, but I'd like to believe there are. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are tunnels. You're going to find Elio down there just yeah. ripping a shirt off <laughs> in, in the tunnel during an over in the cup final. Well, Elio did the best video because he, when Dave bought a $42 million house, Elio did a video being like, we made it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> Congrats to us. Can't believe we did it. All right, Hank, what was your one question? Uh. Were you in Ireland recently playing golf? And follow up, if so, yes. How was it? Oh, it was incredible. It was an unreal Wait, was this trip. Work? We, what's up? Was this work? No, this was not work. But I flew home from Ireland, and then I had to get on a plane and go to Buffalo for Chicklets Cup. That's work ethic. Wow. That's showing up to do your wow. job. Wow, you and went that's from leaving no man vacation behind. to your work. So a bender in Ireland followed by a bender in maybe the bigger drinking spot in the world than Ireland, Buffalo. That's when you know you're earning every penny that's going into your bank account. But I was in Ireland. It was beautiful. Although it's crazy. You go to Northern Ireland, and they really, really hate Catholics, a lot of them. Like, they're, I'm Catholic. <laughs> yeah. They fucking hate your guts You, you found this out just British recently? flags <laughs> flying everywhere. Yeah. So I enjoyed Dublin a little bit more when you get to the Irish, you get to the Catholic, and you get to enjoy yourself without some grumpy Northern Irish people in your face. Yeah, I learned don't order an Irish car bomb when you're in Ireland. They don't, they don't like that. <laughs> it's not funny. It's really? It's not funny to yeah. them. Yeah. It's a little, little travel advice from PFT. Uh, they look at that phrase in a much different light than what we would look at it in. Yeah. Did you go I to Wingnuts? What? Did you go to Wingnuts when you were in Buffalo? No, we didn't even. 
What the fuck? We, we were busy. We were, we were uh, all the you jokes I make, much, we were actually dude. busy. Yeah, you work too much. We work too much, bud. You but I, I, much. I went to another wing place. I can't remember the name there. Last time, last Chicklets Cup, it was phenomenal. But it wasn't Wing Nuts. Is that your number one? Yeah, That's our number it's one. It's so yeah. good. It's the best. Yeah. What are they, a sponsor? No, no one, one of the best meals of all time. We sponsored them. Oh, really? Yeah, we sold shirts because the owners, Ed and Alicia, were running it out of a Knights of Columbus. Like, they were literally running out of a kitchen in a Knights of Columbus rec hall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No big deal. Fair enough. When's, yeah. your, uh, when's your next vacation, Ryan? Uh, next week? I got February school vacation. We're going to Florida for a week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I swear to God, we got it's we got called. a chicklets trip to California in, in two weeks. We got a chicklets trip to Atlanta the week after that. We got a chicklets trip to Chicago early December, and then I'm not doing anything. And then I'll try to go down to Florida to play golf for like two nights in January. But you deserve. Don't that. hold me to that. Yeah, you mm-hmm. deserve that. I do. After all this grinding, I know. I mean, you guys, you guys work your bag off. I don't know what you're doing. You both got fifty million in the bank now. So fucking <laughs> stop working so hard, guys. Hank's gonna take <laughs> Hank's Hank's putting in hours now, and he's gonna just take all summer off. He's on the Ryan Whitney. Plan. Hank Hank golfs more than me. Yeah, yeah. he golfs more than everyone. He, he golfs, golfs more than than, everyone. He golfs more than Brooks Kepka. Simulator's gonna be done today. I'm gonna have to you know, <laughs> test it out, grind it out. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hank. Hey, who's your guy's white whale right now for interviews? Ah, uh, that's a good question, Brady. Uh, Belichick would be good. Kevin Durant. Belich- I think you said Belichick to me last time. Kevin yeah. Durant. Do you think there's ever a chance? Yeah, I think there's a chance. Okay. I, I would say yeah, Kevin Durant, Brady, or Belichick. Um, Saban. Saban. Oh. Saban, if he could actually talk ball with us, would be fucking awesome. It it seems like every white whale, at least for us, it's like they got to be retired. You're just yeah, never gonna get. Stories. You're never gonna get them real. Yeah. I know well, if you when you guys get Connor Bedard, Bedard on, I'm I'm like, because he's so young. I know, and he's like so doesn't want to step on any toes. I, we might I have to drag you in for that one. Big okay, Cat carry right. the load. Yeah, I'll just say dumb shit, and you. Cause that's, that's what we do. We interviewed yeah. Logan Cooley, who's a stud rookie on the Coyotes, future superstar. Actually, he's sick, and he was like you know shy, young. He's 19, and Biz and I were complete fools, like yeah. idiots. You just and make, I was like, yeah. I don't think we had any other option there. Yeah, you just say dumb shit. They laugh, and that's the interview. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's it, it. That's it. Yeah, and they he's don't like, say I anything. can tell he's laughing. He's like, these guys are fucking morons yeah, yeah. that's interview 101 he, um he probably just wants to hang out with you yeah i don't know about that everyone wants to hang out with biz i'm like the grumpy old guy that looks older than he even is so nobody wants to hang out with me they want to meet biz i got family members asking if they can meet biz do you have to be like biz's chaperone when you guys on the, when you <laughs> go on these trips are you hurtful. like do you act like is like you look after him no there is no looking after biz you walk down the street everyone right re- i i I know this sounds crazy, but I think if Biz walked down the street with like ten NHL superstars, he might get recognized more than all of them. It's it's out of control. I believe that. And so he's walking and he's talking to everyone, and he's he's actually great. Like he stands and has conversations with everyone. But we're trying to walk to dinner, and I'm always wherever we're going ten minutes before he arrives, sometimes twenty. <laughs> if if he gets a call from Wayne Gretzky, he has to like get up from wherever he is and be like, yeah, yeah I, got, I got your back. Recently, Wayne. Gretzky called him, and he just stood up. He's like, oh, it's Wayne. It's Wayne. Hold on. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love he's it. his guy. He's a big shot. Yeah. Um, he's his guy. All right. Well, Wit, thank you. Can't wait to see you in December. Uh, Thanks, guys. Yeah. Going to be great. All the boys will be oh, out here. Uh, yeah. Last NHL thing I'll say. Um, what is it here? Okay. So these are my teams who can win the Stanley Cup. Vegas Golden Knights, Los Angeles Kings, Edmonton Oilers, Colorado Avalanche, Dallas Stars, New York Rangers, Carolina Hurricanes, Boston Bruins, Toronto Maple Leafs. That's it. Okay. Yep. No one from outside of that. So there's two teams or three teams that if (laughs) everything went right, Tampa, the Devils, and what was the other one? You said the Panthers? That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Okay. I like oh, that. Oh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. But that's been a tough start, too. So there's, I think, whatever I listed is the cup winners and then three others, if everything magically happened at some point, they could do it. So I guess I got 11 cup winners. Is there another Connor Bedard in the next draft? Uh, yes. And so oh. I am a coach's advisor. Um, I can't talk to the players, but I can talk to the coaches who can then talk to the players for the BU men's hockey team. That's where I played for three years. And... They are an amazing team. They've started a little slow, but it's going to be a special year. They have a kid named Macklin Celebrini. He's going to go first. Macklin Celebrini? I love it. What a fucking name. 
He turned 17 in June or July, and he's dominating college hockey he's already. He's 17? It's, it's, it's big cat. It's nuts. <laughs> it's crazy. absolutely fucking nuts. And he plays all Macklin three zones. Celebrini. He's like, he's defensively very like aware. And, and then the second pick is a kid, Cole Iserman, and he's going to be you next year. So if Celebrini goes back to BU after being picked first overall, then Iserman and Celebrini will be playing together at BU as the first and second overall pick. So there are some young studs coming in the game. Yeah. Jesus I just, Christ. I 2006, love... he was born. Macklin Celebrini. You Fuck. know what's funny is his dad um, works very closely with the Golden State Warriors and Steph Curry. If you Google his dad, I think he's like a performance and strength coach type thing. Director of sports medicine and performance for the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're Damn. trying to get him on the pod to talk about, you know, his career and, and raising this soon-to-be NHL superstar. Rick Celebrini. Wow. Macklin Celebrini. What a name. And his sister is 14, I believe. She's the number one ranked tennis player in Canada. Jesus Like, under Christ. 18. So they've and, – and then his brother is a freshman at BU with him, a good defenseman. So, obviously, there's something in the genes of this family. Jesus. They got it all. They hogged yep. it all. Uh, all right, Biz, you're the best. Can't wait to I'm see you in a couple biz. weeks. Uh, yeah, I did call you Biz. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, you're the best. Oh, no. I feel like I do that at least oh. once every single time. He does. That's who That's who he really wishes was on the show, I want, guys. I, all, I, all you people listening. I, no, 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 that's not true. We specifically yeah, requested how, Ryan how, Whitney because we knew that, that we, true? Knew, we knew Biz was going to be on TV wait, tonight. So and we how, specifically said you. How could that be true when you're the number one PMT guest? You literally very the true, numbers. Very true. I take it back. I've taken a lot back this episode. Yeah. Well, I apologize for that. I wish I could say that was a bit, but I literally just did it. I like, wish. That wasn't a bit. I wish I still had my coin because I would give it to you now to make you feel better. So you have two uh, cups. You're, you're guys are, gave you guys away. are great you guys. Cups. Hank, you want to give your coin? Hank's my king, but you guys are good dudes. Hank, you want to give your coin? Yeah, you can have my coin. Two. All right. Thanks, Hank. Wit. All right. So Wit's got two two cups. Well, two coins that could and turn into And a silver medal. And a silver medal. <laughs> And and uh, uh, almost a runner-up for the Oilers. Actually, I'm giving mine to the Tibbsnader. Oh, oh no, uh, that was a bad that's idea. That's another good one. That's, that's a- another good one. <laughs> that's another good one. Uh, All right, boys. All right, see ya. Thanks, Thanks Whit. Thanks, guys. Ryan Whitney was brought to you by Lightbox Lab Grown Diamonds, grown in Portland, gifted by you. Lab Grown Diamonds are a great gift. We've got Thanksgiving and the holiday season coming up, followed up by valentine's day right around the corner there's always a good reason to give lightbox lab grown diamonds they're incredible you're gonna love them they're the best kept secret in holiday gift giving they're stunning stones simply priced lightbox lab grown diamonds are simply priced and proudly grown from 100 percent renewable wind energy at the lightbox lab in portland oregon if you're popping the question this season a lightbox lab grown diamond would be the perfect way to do it and they're good deals too and if you're after that good deal and you don't know where to start, Lightbox makes it easy. They have fixed prices. That means that the days of negotiating at the jewelry store with uncertainty, that's all behind you. It's gone. Risk-free shipping and easy returns make Lightbox the easiest way to shop for stunning quality lab-grown diamond jewelry. All you have to do is go check them out online, and we're going to give you 10% off your order with promo code PMTPOD10 at lightboxjewelry.com. It's very important. I know it's holiday season coming up. You're starting to think ahead. Don't get caught behind. Don't let it be mid-December where you haven't really figured out where you're going to go, what kind of ring, what kind of diamond you're going to be getting. Use Lightbox Lab Grown Diamonds right now. Take care of it, and you get 10% off. That can be a lot of money. You can save 10% off your order with code PMTPOD10 at lightboxjewelry.com. All of Lightbox's modern classics shine solo or they can be layered for high-impact sparkle, and Lightbox also offers loose, lab-grown diamonds for you to use in your own dream design. It's really perfect. Check it out right now. Again, 10% off when you go to lightboxjewelry.com and use promo code PMTPOD10. That's Lightbox. Okay, let's wrap up with Jimbo's. Henry, I have a Jimbo. I always take the same number in the lottery ball. Fuck But off. for some reason, oh. I didn't take it. And now all my friends are making fun of me because I'm a fucking moron. Yeah. That hurt, Hank. I have a Jimbo. I need to get a travel credit card. Why is well, that, just sounds, that sounds awful. Not for like personal travel. Oh. Oh, to get points. Yeah. Oh. I, I, my points game is terrible. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you got to get points, bro. Yeah. It's all about the points. What's the best points? Sky miles. 
Visa. Uh, you, I'll figure it out. That's you're gonna, no, ch Chase. You're, you're going to get so many overly detailed explanations. I can refer you, little bro. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, no, I had a realization yesterday when I was booking some personal travel because I don't book that Another much personal vacation. travel. Where are you going? Like, mm -hmm. uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, a man like holidays, you family, that much vacation. family. Do you guys care about family? Golf. Family. <laughs> what are we talking, Cali? Oh, I'm going to San Diego to see my family. Oh, Tory Pines. Golf. With my family. Tory Pines. With I family. bet you get some good points for golf. I yeah whatever I gotta figure that out. Uh, There's definitely a golf credit card out there. Mm -hmm. Was at a bar for Halloween. A bunch of boys in the bathroom and a guy walked in with sunglasses and a blind walking stick. I asked if he was Stevie Wonder. Luckily he didn't hear me because moments oh, later no. I realized he was actually blind mm -hmm. as he used the walking stick to get to the urinal. I promptly oh, left no. the bar. Oh no. Well, you could have just left the bathroom and then what's he gonna do? Find you? Yeah, I mean, good news is he doesn't know what you look like. Right? Yeah. It's also Halloween. It's Halloween. You can't. It's Halloween. You know what, yeah. though? You got to have a sense of humor. Yeah. You got to laugh. And he knows it's Halloween. It's Halloween. Also, I feel like maybe he was doing the costume. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think maybe he was actually. I think you were right. I think he was just going so far into character. It would have been funny if, if the blind guy was like, what, do we all look the same to you? Yeah. And like actually told you you were being racist. Yeah. Not blindest. That would have been yeah. funny. I was flying with my dad to Chicago for the Wisconsin Rutgers game a few weeks back. As we were in the airport for a 7 a.m. flight, our flight was delayed five hours, and I went on the app to see if we can switch to an earlier flight. I saw that there was one at 9 for no extra cost, so I switched it. Turns out the flight was at 9 p.m. Mm. Messing up travel when your dad puts you in charge of the plans is brutal. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but your dad just looks at himself as being like, okay, that's that's my fault for putting my son yeah, in charge. Yeah, for raising of you. Yeah. Maybe you, you sit there and get a James Harden scoop. That's... Sitting at the airport for that long, just cancel everything. Just yeah. leave. Go home. All right, last one. Last week, one of my good friends was so generous to offer me tickets to go to a college football game with him. It would have been a great time and a lot of fun, but I declined because there was a World Series game playing at the same time, and I was oh, expecting my no. team to be there. Oh, well, my team got bounced no. in the CS, and now I feel like an asshole. Oh, oh man. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. We were on the field. It was sick. It was a lot of fun. Being on the field for a major college football game is so much fun, especially when you don't have any other obligations like your team in the World Series. This is fake. You made made that narrative. No one I said that except you for you. I asked you on Monday, and you said, no, I'm good. Correct. Why? What? Because the, there was a World you Series You are game. the one who said the why. No, no, no. I know why you were good. You, that, but like, you that don't like a, football? That's, that's, you don't like football, Max? I watched, the, I watched the football game. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, you watched it where? At a bar. The bar. Oh, the bar that you thought you were going to watch the World Series at. That's not true. Mm. Why did you not go? I because it was cold. That I I was <laughs> memes just, like that. <laughs> I just wanted to you know see the atmosphere. Want to get the, drunk? I just wanted to, wanted to see the. You wanted atmosphere. to see the Phillies play in the World Series. I'm right. Max you, can say I'm not right, but I'm a hundred percent right. You just spent twenty seconds trying to explain yeah. why you didn't go, and you were unable to think of a lie. That was wrong. That was I astounding. texted him before Game Six. He thought there was no chance the Diamondbacks were winning two at the bank. No, but correct. I did not think that we were going to lose two at the bank. I didn't think it. I didn't think it. I didn't think it. You and that's why you didn't go to the game. Also not true. Mm -hmm. You still haven't said why you didn't go. I wanted to, you know, go see the town bars, you know, see what the atmosphere is like at the bars. <laughs> There's no booze in the stadium. Hmm. Interesting. That is valid. Yeah. That's valid. I would, But I that's not why. I would not enjoy going to a college football that's game. Not no, but like yeah, no booze hours. in the stadium is crazy. It's yeah. stupid. I agree. But that's not why. <laughs> we all know why. All right. I'm, I'm in a I, – I don't know what to do here. Yeah. Uh, Hank, have you ever gotten this? No. Has your number ever come up? I don't have a number. Yeah, you do. Mm. Numbers. 17. Oh. 18. 31. I'll go with... <laughs> now I'm like... I'm 20. S I'll go 71. I might have... Verse 17. I, I'm, I know. Memes? I You're gotten it? Three. By the way... Three. Uh, Pre-Fire Fest. I'm not... I... This is too much. I shouldn't have taken this much off my chin. Beard wise, I'm seeing myself. Shane Tan, it's fat. It's very 72. fat. Seventy-two. <laughs>
easy. Eighty nine. Eighty nine. Who's gonna be the first to get it? Would have been Hank on Sunday. I think it's gonna be Jake. Jake just finds a way. We'll see. Yeah. Jake finds a way. Okay, we'll see everyone on Friday. Love you guys.